Hey everybody, welcome to the Gym Masters Show Live. How are you and you and you? Good to have you with us. It is nice to see you on a Saturday night. Everybody watching all around the world. It's awesome to have you here. Lots of comments already coming in. This is your host, Jim Masters, and we had a really busy day today. We were at Public Television, PBS, shooting some uh, and co-hosting some segments for upcoming public television specials, some holiday concert specials that are going to be really great that you're going to see on public television. And then we had a couple of radio shows today, and then we were preparing for our fantastic guest, yes, Tony, and uh, Grammy award-winning actor and singer John Lloyd Young is here live, and I'm so happy he could stop by. He's working on some really cool projects, and uh, I'm sure you're very familiar with his amazing talent and his wonderful work. We're going to chat with him about uh, his life and his career, and of course, some other cool things that he's working on, actually some holiday-themed productions as well, some cool stuff. First, we welcome everybody uh, from around the world. We have an international audience. If you're just joining us for the first time, I am your host, Jim Masters. I'm a professional television and radio personality, presenter, host, journalist, actor, writer, producer, voiceover artist, uh, stage MC, and more. been doing this work for a long time. And just about 30 weeks ago, we launched this Entertainment Lifestyle talk show series with lots of light, love, and levity, or as we call it on this show, Lovity, <laughs> and all the viewers call themselves Lovity, and they call me Mr. Lovity, and they say that this is Lovity Hall, and I love that. I think that's cool. We can all use more Lovity in our lives about now, right? I toast all of you. It's good to have you with us. Nice to see everybody, and from wherever you're watching, this is, again, an entertainment lifestyle talk show series designed to put smiles on your faces. It's also bringing back, from what everybody keeps telling me, colleagues in the industry, friends, guests, viewers, bringing back the lost art of conversation. Uh, and I think that's really cool because we've been so busy in our lives that we've been losing the opportunity to converse in a conversational, easy way. We don't even call these interviews. We call these conversations. And again, the show has lots of uh, levity, entertainment. We have guests that come in from television, Broadway, Hollywood, film, music, health and wellness, science, culinary arts, comedy, sports, you name it. Uh, and every show is something different too. We try to spice it up. Uh, I do this, believe it or not, out of our home studio. We're here in the greater New York City area along the Southern New England coast between New York and Boston here in the United States of America for the international audience. And we have folks that watch literally all around the world, South Africa, the Netherlands, Australia, New Zealand, Ireland, and of course, across the United States, Canada, and more. In just a second, I'm going to welcome my very special guest to the show. But first, we always like to greet our viewers, or as they call themselves, and we call you Lovities here on the show. Willie is here watching from the Netherlands. Good to see you, Willie. How do you do? I'm glad to see you again. And the Lovities, have a nice evening. Thank you, Willie. Hope you're having a good day there in the Netherlands. And there are your tulips as well. Mary Bishop is here watching in Florida. Hello, Jim and Lovities, and welcome to the show, John. Denise is here. Hi, everyone. Good to see you, Denise, watching on our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us exclusively on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. If you're on the channel, we hope you subscribe to the channel because we do this show live every single day of the week, seven days a week, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific on YouTube. Sometimes we also do it on Facebook at Gym Masters TV, but uh, we're exclusively on YouTube right now. And this link to this episode will be available so you can share it. You can watch it again. Uh, all 200 episodes of the Gym Masters Show Live are archived on YouTube for your viewing pleasure and on-demand binge watching like a lot of people like to do, and we love that. Marie is here. Good to see you, Marie. Hello, everyone. Nice to see you on a Saturday night, Marie. Thanks for joining us on the YouTube channel for the show. Margaret is here. Hi, everyone. Good to see you, Margaret. Welcome. And patiently waiting all day for this. We love that. Thanks, Karis McMillan. That is cool. It's good to see you and welcome. Juanita is here from South Africa, one of our regular viewers, our Lovities. Hi, Jim and all Lovities. Good to see you as well. Donna Owen is here. Hello. Good to see you, Donna. Thanks for joining us tonight. Uh, Edie's channel is here. Hi, everyone. Welcome. It's good to see you. Judith Lee is here. Good to see you, Judith. Welcome. Carol is here saying hi. Good to see you, Carol. Maureen is here. Hi, everyone. This is going to be a great show. Absolutely. John is all prepped. 
Uh, he's in the green room waiting. He's uh, enjoying lobster and champagne and the finest cheeses and chocolates that we've provided him. Maybe <laughs> we would, but hey, in the, in the land of COVID, it's kind of hard to do that. <laughs> Welcome, uh, fans of John, of course, as well. And hi all from Tina. That's fantastic. Good to see you, Tina. And Merlin, who's in Canada. Hello, Jim and all lovities. Nice to see you, Merlin in Canada. Hey, T, Maureen is here as well. Thank you very much, Willie. We love that. Awesome. And um, thank you for this interview. My pleasure. And I hope you become a regular viewer on our show on Jim Masters TV. Hey, Jim from Judith. Good to see you as well. Christine Clifton from North Carolina. Greetings, Jim and Lovities. We welcome Tony winning actor, singer, John Lloyd Young to the show tonight. There'll be a fantastic conversation. Lovity Hall, music more. Absolutely. Absolutely. Good stuff. Nice comments coming in here from all around the world. Hello to you, Margaret, and to Denise, and to Tina, and to Soraya. Nice to see you as well. Uh, welcoming everybody. And I already told John... Uh, that you guys are going to welcome him into Lovity Hall here as a Lovity. So he's ready to go. He said, hey, the world can use some more Lovity. And I agree. Uh, and it's a cool thing. We cool vibe we have here on the show. Jason Communications, Master Your Power. Jill, good to see you. Welcome. And cheers to you, Denise. Sharon says hello. Good to see you, Sharon. And a lot of folks here. We'll continue through and then we'll welcome John. Uh, welcoming John as well. Hello from Brazil. Carol, we have several viewers from Brazil. It's really cool to see you. Thanks for joining us there in Brazil. Love it, love it, love it. Smiles coming in from Judith Lee. We love that as well. Uh, Margaret says, hi from Canada. Absolutely. Judith subscribed. Hey, we love that. And you're in beautiful Hawaii. Not too shabby. We'll have to come out and do a show live on location in Hawaii. We have done some on location segments on this show. Lots of them. Desiree, thumbs up. Tina subscribed. Love that. Beautiful. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. Dante CD, who's in San Diego, California. Welcome all to Lovely Hall. And Amy says, welcome. Oh, hi from Scotland. Karis, we have lots of viewers in Scotland, Ireland, and England. And we've had a lot of actual artists, musicians, singers, performers from uh, the UK and from Ireland as well. Nice to see you there. Uh, Tina is in the Poconos. Come to Hawaii. All right. Fuel up the jet. We're headed to Hawaii. <laughs> and uh, Amy had said uh, hello from Detroit and hi from Texas. It's nice to see all of you from everywhere. And we welcome you if this is the first time you're checking us out. Again, we're here every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And sometimes we do shows at different times uh, earlier in the day, like on the weekend, if we have an artist who's in Ireland, Scotland, uh, England, what have you, we try to accommodate the, that time period because of the fact that it's really late for them when we start our show at 7 p.m. Eastern. Just a quick uh, thing here, a note of house uh, updates. Uh, Melissa Manchester is our guest tomorrow live here on our YouTube channel. Yes, the one and only music legend. She's all excited. We're excited to welcome her as well. She's going to be here on the show. That's Sunday. That's tomorrow. That's going to be fantastic. We're so, so, so excited. Really, really cool. So join us tomorrow, same time, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific Live. Melissa Manchester is going to be here. Just want to let you know, I know you guys, a lot of you love Celtic Thunder, and I've interviewed all the guys, uh, on PBS over the years. Uh, Keith Harkin is going to be joining us on December 12th. And uh, he was with Celtic Thunder. Now he, right now, is with his wife and child and he's uh, touring Portugal. He's going to be live from Portugal then. And also, remember this face? This is Alison Arngrim. She was Nellie Olsen, <laughs> Little House in the Prairie. She's going to be here on November 30th. That's a week from this Monday. She's going to be here live. So we're looking forward to that. And we're looking forward to chatting with John Lloyd Young right now. Let me tell you a little bit about him. I love, we're going to show you a lot of different pictures and a lot of cool things. I think that is such a cool picture, really cool picture. So we're going to stop and focus on that when I tell you just a little bit about him. And uh, there's so much to tell, too, because he's a film, stage, and concert artist. John Lloyd Young is a Tony and Grammy-winning multi-platinum recording artist, presidential appointee as well. That's right. As the original Frankie Valli in Broadway's Tony Award-winning musical, Best Musical, Jersey Boys, 
John garnered unprecedented accolades from the New York and national media going on to become the only American actor to date to win all four major Broadway leading actor and a musical honors for a Broadway debut, the Tony, Drama Desk, Outer Critics Circle, and Theater World Awards. John uh, starred in Jersey Boys on London's West End and was handpicked by director Clint Eastwood to reprise his role in the Warner Brothers film adaptation as well, becoming one of only a few select actors in the entertainment industry to take his Tony winning role to the big screen. Over the years, uh, John has sung selections from Jersey Boys several times at the White House as well as in the halls of Congress and to the Kennedys, the Clintons, the Bushes, the Obamas, the Bidens, Trumps, Pences, you name it, even the prime minister and first lady. That's right, uh, Shinzo Anaki of Japan and the president and first lady of Finland as well. As a concert artist, John has taken his expertly curated repertoire of classic pop and R&B to fill capacity rooms, thrilling his audiences with a disciplined one in a million high tenor shading into falsetto that he can direct through the stratosphere. That according to the New York Times. And again, he's played the White House, Carnegie Hall, Lincoln Center, the Hollywood Bowl, the John F. Kennedy Center for the Performing Arts, the U.S. Embassy in Finland, Mar Lago, Clint Eastwood's uh, Country Club, New York, uh, the wonderful Cafe Carlisle, Feinstein's in New York and San Francisco, Radio City Music Hall, the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade, New Year's Eve in Times Square, and so much more. He's appeared in addition to being on the Jim Master Show live tonight, <laughs> he's also appeared on Live with Kelly and Michael and the Today Show, Extra Entertainment Tonight, NPR's All Things Considered, Here and Now, Access Hollywood, C-SPAN's Washington Journal, and more. His five-star rated solo album of classic and R&B, My Turn, debuted as a bestseller on Amazon, remains a fan favorite with several songs from the album requested at each of his live performances. We're going to talk more. I don't want to give everything away now because I would like to have him hop on here, but uh, it is my pleasure live and direct from Los Angeles, California to welcome our very special guest, John Lloyd Young to the show. Hey, John, welcome to the show. It is a pleasure to have you here, my friend. Welcome. Hello <laughs> and hello, everybody. I recognized about half of those uh, messages. So it's nice also to see some new new faces. I get what I love love it is. Love it is right. Now, you got <laughs> now, I'm, now I'm an honorary love it. Yeah, yeah. How does that make you feel? I mean, I know you well, got the I Tony. Mean, I know you got the Grammy. Uh, but the pinnacle is the love it, isn't it? <laughs> well, that whole list of uh, you know somewhat embarrassingly long list of of accomplishments that you just listed, and now I just add another another one to that list. Tonight is out. Now I'm a lovety. Now you're a lovety on the Jim Master Show live. Kathleen Walker says from New York City says, Welcome, John. And Judith right. Judith Lee says, Hi, John. And Juanita, who's in South Africa, one of our lovety regulars, says, Welcome uh -huh. to the show, John. Diana Howitt says, Hello to all of us. Kathy Short, good evening. Good to have her here. She just joined us, Dante, in uh, San Diego, just south of you. Welcome, John, to Lovety Hall. You're now a Lovety. <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take it. Jason Communications, Master Your Power, says, bravo, John. Love that. Love that. Um, we've got uh, Evelyn saying hello from Michigan. That's really, really cool. Yeah, hello to us. Evelyn. Rhonda, hello from Southern California. Hey, John. Yeah, I know Rhonda. Ramina wow. says, hi from Melbourne, Australia, where it's in the morning wow. there in Mar Australia. Good to have I you, Ramina. I, I think I just got a letter from her. That's fantastic. From Romina. This is a one, what I'm liking is this a blending of the folks who follow you with our lovety audience and they're all becoming friends. They're becoming one. And isn't that cool happening right here on the show? I think that's awesome. When that I happens. love that. Yeah. We'll talk about that later. You can talk to me about the friendships. That's really, that's, really important. That's something you and I have in common. I'm, I'm, I'm learning right now in these few minutes. So we'll talk about that. Absolutely. Karis is uh, in Scotland where it's 12 a.m. Uh, and she's still loving it. And Willie, who is one of our regular levities, she watches every night where it's 1 a.m. in the Netherlands. <laughs> so oh. I think she might have Karis beat by at least one hour as far as uh, staying up so late. Uh, really cool. 
Merlin says, what an awesome career. John, she's in Canada. She's in the Ontario an, uh, area. And Rhonda, hey, John. And Tina, uh, hi, uh, John. And Denise, hi, John. And Trace, Tracy says, hey, hey. Margaret says, hi, John, from Canada. Christine Clifton, one of our lovities. She's from North Carolina. Welcome to the Gym Master Show Live. You are now a lovity, John. Thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> well, as I, I said, I, I will take it. That's Maurice's hi and Ma Maureen Lovety, my new favorite word. Hello, John from Arizona. Welcome to the show, Maureen. Soraya says, uh, hi, John. Welcome to the show. So, John, now that you're bowled over with all of the uh, love coming from our show and the viewers and your folks joining us as well, how have you been? How have you been, you know, remaining creative and connected during what has been a year that, as I've been saying on and off the air, only Steven Spielberg, Stephen King, or Rod Serling could ever have scripted. <laughs> How yeah. have you been through all this? Right. Well, uh, you know, up and down like all of us, um, I can't say that, well, I'm, in terms of attitude and, and, and just um, continuing forward and staying creative, mostly up good uh, while at the same time feeling the weight of everything that's uh, that's been going on like all of us in fact i'm i'm kind of more of an introverted type of person so the staying home and um you know and, and wearing the mask and sort of kind of hiding even when you're out in public is is something that you know i've in another era i might have ended up like a a recluse like garbo or something you know right wearing the mask in public and all that stuff is uh, suits me because I'm a little shy. Um, but the reason of, of wearing the mask is, you know, the first few months, every time I would go out to walk the dog or whatever, I would just feel this heavy weight on my shoulders of, of this crisis that was happening. Um, but just the last few days, you know, today or yesterday when I was out with the dog, I, I, I started to feel even as an introverted guy, just this itch to get together again in yes. public places to be able to go to a movie or to go to right and i uh, i know it's not time for that yet and we're actually ending you know they're saying that we're going to end up in a really hard period through the holidays so i am staying optimistic with the news of the two vaccines and um and staying creative uh but eager to have this behind us and, yeah. and to, to sort of be able to engage with people again, like we used to be able to do and, and, and trying to maintain a good attitude. And one thing that I noticed in your introduction that I'm really regretting now, cause I'm sitting in my, you know, easy chair with my dog here at my feet uh, is that I noticed <laughs> I noticed your cocktail and I thought, well, why don't we Graham Norton this thing? And I, I could be drinking my cocktail too, but I, I, you know, maybe next time we do this, I'll realize we can go all Graham Norton and I'll, you know, for those of you in Scotland and you know, the British <laughs> Isles, you know, I'll bring my, uh, my tumbler of something, uh, some, maybe some Scotch whiskey from very Ireland. nice. Do you have anything there? Water or soda? I mean, we've had oh, people. I, I'm yeah. good. I mean, I'm good, but yeah. I, I'm just saying, you know, um, I, I could have joined you at this, but I, I just didn't know. But but don't feel so bad. You know why? Why? Because we will have you back, and we will okay. do that. All because, right. Because in this fancy glass, which yeah. actually was given to me by a dear friend who is also a viewer, was uh, my birthday was September, and she, this came in the mail. Uh, it's uh, hard to see, but it's got a New York Mets logo on it. The Mets you oh, know, that's cool. grew up with the Mets. It's their official uh, wine glass. Uh, it looks all fancy and expensive as far as what's in the glass. Yeah. It's Trader Joe's pink lemonade. <laughs> so all don't right, feel so, so bad. Okay. All right. So you're yeah. doing, you're, you're behaving yourself. We're behaving, but okay. next time we'll step it up. Right. <laughs> I, I, I just committed to it. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're just alive. Right. Uh, uh, Carol says, can, uh, viewers send questions? Absolutely. Just post on YouTube and Facebook. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Louise, you don't feel so bad, John. Uh, Louise says, hi, John, not very Graham Norton here in England with my hot chocolate. <laughs> well, um, 
Yeah, I guess spiking hot chocolate probably won't taste that good. So yeah, yeah so yeah. well, up to t I should put Bailey's in it maybe. <laughs> Bailey's. Yeah. Irish whiskey. Yeah, I think we can. I think we can just kind of go alcohol free on this one. And again, yeah. I, you know, I'm here from sunny California, and we're a 420 state, so we also have the you know edibles and all that stuff. But I think I'm going to sort of keep clean this weekend. Explain uh, for I people wanna, watching. I want to be clear headed for for yeah. you. Yes, absolutely. Uh, explain that what 420 is for people watching that might not be aware of that. You know what 420 is, right? Yes. 420 is is you know um, slang for for Mary Jane or you know what well, this is California come on I mean you know at, but as California goes so does the nation so probably this last election we just had a bunch of other states get you know followed suit you know Colorado California and you know, Amy likes it's it another, it's another it's another it's another way of kind of taking the edge off of covid but it also yeah, yeah is um you know i wouldn't really recommend it you know but very very often but it is yeah. a sad again the graham yeah. norton thing i'm sort of i just assumed you were drinking out of a wine glass i assumed that it, there was some you know uh, some uh alcohol. well i was going to say uh, uh amy says <laughs> brownies that's another one yeah they sell well, them well i was going to say willie in amsterdam may know what we're talking about with that I, one <laughs> well, uh, someday Willie of Amsterdam, I'll tell him. Someday I'll tell him my story, my college journey to Amsterdam, which was uh, quite eye-opening. You, you know, you go into a, a store there, and they have blister-packed, uh, you know, m marijuana cigarettes. You know, on those little bars that stick out, and so you, yeah. oh, I'll take this one. It was, uh, and that was a mid '90s. You know, so. Uh, that was scandalous, but Amsterdam has been famous for that, but we might give them a run. If travel comes back anytime soon, there's so many States in the United States now that could give them a run for their money. I have a friend, a colleague that uh, worked with me. Uh, you know, as I mentioned, I work in television and radio and all, and uh, we used to be on so many shoots together uh, all over the country and they would bring him in as the camera person. And he moved from New York to California and he is, uh, he's in the LA area and he moved there with his girlfriend uh, because of that. And he does freelance camera work once in a while, but he's working for a company that manufactures, sells and all of that. He's, he, he's making quadruple what he was making when he was a camera guy. And you know, one thing has to give way to the other because now as the camera guy, you know, if he were still the camera guy and working in that other industry too, his camera work would start to be kind of a little bit like this. Like you know? we're on a ship or something, a cruise yeah, ship and that's rocking. Right. <laughs> and so, so maybe, you know, sometimes it's, sometimes it's a good thing in life to just uh, move on into a new chapter, you know? Right. Exactly. Exactly. So you've Works been for, for 20. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, as opposed to it's five o'clock somewhere, it's four twenty somewhere too. <laughs> oh, I think it's four twenty here. Yeah. It's four twenty seven here. That's okay. right. Actually, anyway, we need to stop with that. We need to stop funny. with that. This is a little, you know, that is crazy. actually a lot more clean cut than that. You know, yes, so, absolutely, you know. absolutely. Uh, Soraya says uh, holiday cookies, birthday cakes. It's her stepdad's birthday today. Well, happy birthday to your stepdad, Soraya. Okay. That is fantastic, fantastic. Marie says uh, going through travel and concert withdrawals because there are none. Are you yeah. finding that to be the case? A lot of people I've talked to have been saying um, that they were fine with like the Zoom and, and all of that type of stuff in the early months, but now it's getting old school. They really want to be out there. They want to be on set. They want to be on stage. They want to be connected with the people. The yeah. excitement of the Zooms and all those types of things are wearing off for a lot of people. I don't, I was never excited by the Zooms. But again, like I told you, I'm shy, you know, I, and especially, uh, you know, um, doing something from my own living room or my kitchen and, you know, 
opening uh, up the world, right? Not interesting to me. Yeah, so, but I'm also not someone who like I'm not a phone conversationalist. I'm, I don't talk right. on the phone a lot, and I, like I said, I'm kind of shy. I'm not so, a phone person either. Not yeah. At all. Um, so for me, the Zoom thing really didn't become a, a thing, and um, but I've gotten comfortable just doing some of these things on this, you know, my corner chair here with my computer and it's, you know, that's acceptable to me. And, you know, I wear pants, you know, I don't, you know, I know that's like the cliche that, you don't from that, waist that down, you don't know, from waist to get dressed to do these. Oh, well, I mean, of to course. I'm at home on a weekend, so I'm kind of casual, but yeah, you know. you're a class act. Of course, of course. <laughs> so when I'm on camera, I mean, when you're on camera, when you're on camera, um, so let's go back in time. I was talking about how, uh, and I'm glad that, you know, you're doing okay and you're well and family's well and everything is good. So that's cool to hear. Um, and I'm happy to hear that, John. And I, again, I really thank you for joining us uh, tonight. Um, let's go back in time. I mentioned that I wanted to find out a little bit more for the audience too. Early on when we were youth, what were some of the things that inspired you early on? Did you always know when you were a kid that you wanted to get into performance and entertainment and the arts? Uh, do you have family members who are also performers? What did the influences and the inspiration initially start for you in the early years, John? For me, the uh, you know movies and and that kind of stuff was a real escape and us also a through line because I, I was the child in a you know of, of a military officer so there was moving around and stuff like that and so movies for me and in my childhood things like hbo were just starting to happen right there weren't really video rentals and things yet uh they were coming up when i was in my you know before i was double digits of age you know <laughs> so, so going to the movie theater was a big event and um i remember very distinctly, I think it was the same year, I think it was 1982, that both E.T. and Annie both came out the same year. Very exciting for kids. 1985 was The Goonies. Uh, 1984 was The, uh, the Empire Strikes, or uh, was uh, Return of the Jedi. And these were big moments for me as a kid. I also liked, you know, my dad was really strict with what I could watch at home or what we could go and see at the movies. But my aunt and cousins and stuff in New York City, when I would go to visit them in the, in the summers, they weren't so strict with stuff. So I also got into like horror movies back then, Nightmare on Elm Street and all that stuff. Yeah. And what really inspired me um, before, you know, clearly then there also were Broadway shows that I would see. Um, so that kind of stoked an early interest. But what was really interesting to my major interest as a young kid was uh, movie makeup for, you know, horror films and stuff. So um, I had a makeup kit. I even had a life mask of myself that my dad helped me make with the uh, alginate, which is what which is uh, dental molding material. And you put it on your face, put some some uh, you put little straws in your nose and then and you build like a little like a like a barrier here and you pour alginate on your face and then uh you take that off and it's a mold of your face and you just fill that with plaster and then this so then you have a positive of your face and i remember i had to like cover my eyebrows and eyelashes with vaseline and my whole face and stuff so things wouldn't stick and then uh, when that mold came out then i had my own face that i could build prosthetics on and uh, really get into things with latex, whatever, so that I could build different characters. And that, and of course, gashes and wounds and all that stuff that a, 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 a you know, a preteen boy, you know, I was typical in that way. That was uh, fascinating for me. You know, my parents would, my parents would go out for some sort of event and they, and they'd come home and, you know, I'd have my, you know, my friends, you know, in the almost like that movie Harold and Maude, they'd yeah. walk in the door, and I'd have like a friend uh, like lying in the foyer with a you know a gash neck dead on the floor, or <laughs> I'd be the one, you know. So um, that was uh, really fun for me, and, and of course that's performative 
so that kind of you know moving around with a military family you know it was in a place like sometimes we were hundreds or thousands of miles away from like a theater city like new york so um i was kind of living those things out then halloween was my favorite holiday because you could come up with a character and plan the costume and makeup and totally transform and um so those were sort of ways that i actually got involved with what ultimately ended up becoming my career um but through a different uh, you know a different angle at reading fangoria magazine all the time where the monsters and the, the gore and all that stuff and yeah. um it, it, you know got me interested in, in movies that was my my first interested move my first interest in movies was not aside from getting involved in the story of a great movie like goonies you know which i still love um steven spielberg who you mentioned mm -hmm. um see i'm living did you hear that yeah. wow you've got your own sound effects and everything well because I'm, li <laughs> I'm living in los angeles there's stuff going on outside but um you know but uh but my first you know aside from again lo loving movies to watch them my first sort of spark of wanting to be involved with them was through special effects makeup Mm, right. Yeah. Yeah. And that's really, really cool. Um, and Marie actually says movie makeup is truly an art form. And yeah. we're going to talk also about the fact that you are a brilliant artist as well. Um, and we're going to show some, some of the work um, before we get into that. So let's talk about this progression of the, the acting, the singing, uh, what did you lean towards first early on, John? Was it the singer? Was it the acting? And what were some of those other opportunities that came your way that maybe you would say would be an early big break or a door that opened for you that sort of set that path for this career that you have now? Well, singing was always a real natural thing for me. In fact, I, I sang at the at my father's wedding to my stepmother when I was three years old, wow. um, you know, acapella in the arms of the band leader into a microphone. It was Debbie Boone's you light up my life. Yeah. Good which is, is really interesting. Cause that was like 1978 and you're going to talk to Melissa Manchester tomorrow. Whose big hit was that same year, I think. Right. What was that? Don't cry out loud. Yeah. And then that of was course, like 1978 yeah. theme to ice castles. Yeah, she's had a yeah. lot of great, yeah, great yep. music. So, so I was a contemporary of Melissa Manchester's at three years old. Yeah, so, right. <laughs> um, Ahead of his time. <laughs> yeah, so that, so I, and I would, and you know, sorry, I'm moving around. No, that's okay. That's okay. But, you know, as you know, um, as anyone knows, if a three year old can sing on key, that probably means that they've got some natural talent. So, um, and people and recognize that early, yeah, right? I didn't have accompaniment or whatever. Yeah. So that was an early sort of talent that then when there was a, you know, a community theater production to be in a lot of times, if a kid's going to be in a print community theater production, it's probably a musical. So I did some of those, but I also spent a lot of time in the basement of a, of the, one of these places that we that we lived was in upstate New York near the border of Canada and the little small town had a bookstore a used bookstore and in the basement was the drama section mm. and I used to go in there and read plays and try to find plays that I that a kid could do that a kid was in so of course I'd find like Brighton Beach memoirs or whatever but I also was reading like Long Day's Journey Into Night and imagining myself as like you what is it eugene tyrone or whoever the sun like that but i was still too young for that but i was reading those things so i had an interest i had a very strong interest in new york and 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 uh off broadway and broadway and would uh fantasize myself into that city into, the, into that world through books um and lps musical lps musical theater lps from the public library what you know lps at that Point, you would take out and go and not even CDs, LPs. Yeah. So, um, Look that at was the hard. album art too. You probably loved looking at all the album art and the design. Oh, yeah. I always did too. Yeah. Uh, it gives you a good sense of 
you know, gets you excited. The good marketing always does, but gets you excited about what's on the other side of that that album. What what live things what you, know, you can imagine yourself into that theater or 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 in my case into the play itself. So I did a lot of that, and then when I was in high school, um, I did my own radio show. My first like professional job for audience was a radio show. And I was in upstate New York then. It was a public radio station, WCFE FM 91.9, your public radio station. And I, you well know, done. I love it. <laughs> so I was doing that. It was, I was like 16 and I was creating, uh, you know, I would cover an air shift, which was, you know, I had to play the things that, or, or tap into the news that was coming in, but I had to play things at certain times and I had to do those call letters every right. every hour on the hour. I had to say that stuff. I had to do some announcing. Did you enjoy so, it? I did. It was Sunday mornings and I so it was days off from school and I would go in my sweatpants a Sunday morning and run the ship run a four hour air shift. Right. Um, and then afterward I'd go into the back room in the editing room and onto reel to reel tape I would edit and from the C D library, because they had a library, I would edit together a show every week called on and off broadway mm -hmm. and uh and i play broadway music and or standards sort of like frank sinatra bing crosby that era because i always liked that stuff and and a lot of that era's music originated on broadway stages so it was sort of with that kind of bent and the audience that i had extended all the way up into a major metropolis all the way up into montreal canada yeah. So I was 16 doing an air shift and hosting this program that ran for about two years. Um, and I was getting fan letters because people love that music or whatever. And, you know, there was no XM Broadway channel then. It, this was live radio. And if you didn't tune in, you missed it. Had you so, thought of pursuing a career in broadcasting at that point? Was that we were tickling that idea around a little bit at that every, time? Every angle that there could be to be involved with the arts, I was interested in. And yeah. so at that point in the small town that I was living in, that was the opportunity that was available to me. And in a sense, it was sort of a performance because it was just my voice on the radio. You know, again, like I said, it showed up in sweatpants. It's sort of like nowadays in Zoom. You know, here I am in casual clothes. But it didn't matter what you wore. It only mattered how your voice sounded. And I was... 16 but i'd go in in my most sonorous bar baritone i had a radio voice i would read the news and right. i would you know the radio this is wcfe fm 91.9 you know and i would just eat the microphone that's what you did and i could hear what i was doing and i you know and i just did what i felt sounded like a pleasant radio voice and so that was of course performative in its way too um so every angle would draw me into the that world somehow and uh and uh, you know and i was i was pretty focused on what i wanted when i finally got to the age where i could decide okay this is what i'm going to do and uh, i moved to new york uh got graveyard shifts at Morgan Stanley Dean Witter in Times Square. You know that scene from Vanilla Sky where Tom Cruise is walking through Times Square and it's ghostly and empty? Yeah. Now we all know that from COVID. Like we yeah. saw that for weeks or months. But that Vanilla Sky scene was sort of eerie because it was so empty. Well, I used to take my lunch break, my lunch break yeah. at midnight, 8 p.m. to 4 p.m. shift word processing in a bank. I used to take my lunch break at midnight and the and and Times Square was like that. Totally empty. And the only things open were the McDonald's and Tad Steaks. And that was as either McDonald's or Tad Steaks for lunch, you know. Um and that was the beginning of my career in New York. Uh you know, working at night so that I could audition during the day. Sometimes I was a little worse for the wear. You know, yeah, of course, yeah, graveyard shift, but I, you know, um, but luckily, I also had some flexibility and I could take if I knew I had a bunch of auditions at the end of the week, I could I could take a bunch of shifts at the beginning of the week and sort of so I made it work, you know, a, a lot of uh, 
in normal times, not COVID, but in normal times, a lot of the key to succeeding when you're starting out in a place like New York is just surviving living in New York, get finding a way to survive in New York while you're waiting to find that job. And so, I mean, I, in retrospect, I succeeded at that greatly. I kept my expenses way, way low and, um, didn't have any delusions of ha having a penthouse apartment on Park Avenue you know, right away. You know, I, I kind of, there was something romantic to me about that early struggle. And as I said, as I alluded to early, earlier, when I was reading those books and that, or buying and reading those books from that used bookstore basement, you know, a lot of those stories that I come across, in fact, I kind of was wired in to these certain stories and anecdotes. If I heard, and I did, that Dustin Hoffman was down on his luck when he was starting as an actor and literally was sleeping in the bathtub of Gene Hackman's railroad flat, you know, and You're crying, happy. you know, because and be, type, uh, working as a typist between jobs. I heard my, the people I admired, or Al Pacino used to go to parties just so that he could go and steal food out of the refrigerator. <laughs> so I I heard these stories when I was when I was coming up or dreaming of it. So when I got there and I was one of those, then it was my turn to be one of those aspirants. I knew that those hard things that were happening were part of it for someone who, you know, didn't have a parent who bought them an apartment and set them up and then they could just take classes. Yeah, you know, I wasn't one of those people, and there are some. There, and that's just an, you, something you just have to deal with. It, when push comes to shove, at the end of the day, if the talent and the opportunities meet, it doesn't matter what your background is; it'll happen. You know exactly right, right. But it's, not, but it's about. But if you don't have the parent putting you up in an apartment, or whatever, you have to find a way to stay there, because the stuff that's the stuff that's going to matter is going to happen in New York City. It's not going to happen in Topeka, although you could do cool stuff in Topeka. But eventually, if you want a serious career, you're going to have to end up someplace like Chicago, New York, or Los Angeles. Or Los Angeles. Maybe that's, maybe that's going to change now. With every audition now, is put yourself on mm -hmm. tape because it's all online. Yeah, everything yeah, so, is. Gone. So maybe you could, you know, land a major Hollywood movie from, you know, your your living room. Yeah. Yeah, from Salem, Oregon, or something, you know. Mm -hmm. Claudia and, says um, I could. Claudia says I could never tire of the story of your beginnings, John Lloyd. <laughs> well, there's a lot more where that came from, Claudia. So, you know, Strug struggle into these parent. interviews because it's yeah. a whole. I should write a book someday. Have you thought about that? You know, I uh, I would sell several hundred at this point, but I, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm very aware. I don't, I never behave in such a way that would indicate that I don't have a broad, wide, huge audience. I always, uh, take very, uh, take a lot of care in making sure that whoever is listening is, is maybe getting something they can learn something from or be inspired from or whatever. But that's I, where but you I'm and I are aware, similar. I'm aware that I don't have, three million followers on Twitter right now or whatever. So in terms of writing that book, I think I might wait until there's more wide exposure. And then will I have some great stories to tell? Right. Exactly. So, yeah. know, I might have something to say now there's for, for, I mean, at least for Broadway people that my story, my story of, of what I achieved on Broadway would be, I think very interesting to younger people who are looking for a break. I would have wanted to read my story at that age, but the but when push comes to shove, the beginning stories for artists have, of course, their own idiosyncrasies and their own facts and the way things came together. But they're all very similar, you know. The like when I say that that, well, okay, just for example, I tell you, Dustin Hoffman. Now you can't even touch the guy; he's a legend. But to find out that he was a typist and which you know, when you're that talented an actor, you're typing. Like, that's what I thought when I was at Morgan Stanley. I'm like, I can't believe I'm typing. <laughs> you know, like, all of these things I can do. But I knew that it's 
I didn't have the advantage of being put in acting school or something and then auditioning all day. I had to find a way to make my way. And so, and I knew that the giants who f came before me had gone through those things. So Dustin Hoffman sleeping in a bathtub, I mean, that's not too far from my first days in New York. You want to hear about them? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So I moved to New York City. It was in October. I had done summer stock after a college in Maine, and um, which was, it blew my mind because it was summer stock and it was non-union and it paid pretty well for those days. It was like $250 a week or something, you know, and this is mid nineties or what, late nineties for summer stock in Maine. That's not it's bad. Not bad at all. You know, I had no apartment or anything at that point. I was right out of college. I just I stayed there where I did the stuff, you know, dormitories, whatever. Did this season of summer stock, and then I moved to New York. By the time I found an apartment in New York, it was October. And people who are New Yorkers will know that by law, you don't have to turn the heat on in a building until like a certain date. It's maybe like late October, whatever, but it was already cold. And I moved into my this apartment on the upper, way upper west side of Manhattan, Washington Heights, by the George Washington Bridge. I could mm -hmm. see it from my window. And my apartment had peeling paint all over the walls. The, the, the landlord that allowed me to live there just took so much advantage of how green I was. And I was like, well, there's, can you paint the walls? He's like, no, but I'll, I'll give you three buckets of paint. Okay. <laughs> Yeah. Well, I'm so bad at that stuff and like lazy with like those things. So I lived there for whatever, how many for years with, with chipping paint all over the walls and God forbid probably was asbestos or whatever, but I never painted the walls. Like I didn't want to do it. So uh, anyway, my first night there, it's cold. There's no radiator. All I had was a suitcase, an air mattress and a shower curtain. And it was so cold that I, I had to fashion a hat on my bed my first night in New York City out of a pair of boxer shorts. <laughs> my first night in my first apartment in New York City, I had boxer shorts on my head, you know, with one of the legs tied here as a hat, sleeping in my, on my air mattress Boy. And with stars in my eyes. <laughs> Who the hell knew how, how I would ever end up with Tony Winner on the stage of Radio City Music Hall with, when I, my first night in New York was, you know, sleeping at like a highfalutin yeah. hotel that night. Right. <laughs> you know, my first night in New York was. That's a, that's a real know. different definition of being head over heels, literally. <laughs> yeah, well, they, at least they were clean boxers. That's right. That's so, right. Uh, <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> But Dustin Hoffman sleeping in a bathtub is just as humiliating, if not more. You know, you gotta do what you got to do, right? You got to. Well, I did what I had to do, and right, and that's why some of those there are so many anecdotes like that. There's so much humiliation in an artistic career, and I guess those of us who stick with it are just gluttons for punishment because oh, it yeah. keeps coming, and yeah, um, it keeps coming, and. And I'll say, without getting into s many of those humiliations, there are dozens and dozens, without getting too far into e enumerating each of those or explaining right. each of those. When COVID hit, the austerity that I had to experience as a young actor with nothing, um, the insecurity of being, in my case, an Ivy League graduate who suddenly on the streets, you know, with like nothing left after college and to start from nothing, you know, except for I had stuff here and I right. had moxie, you know, right. Um, uh, those kind of hardships made the adjustment to this COVID thing, um, not easier, but let's say familiar. Mm -hmm. And right. so, you know, what they say, it puts har hair on your chest. Yeah. Right. Right. Hardship. I think adversity, the, getting through adversity is one of the best things that you can do to have uh, at least an, an enriching life, if not an easy one. 
we have a really cool picture that goes back a little bit before those times uh doing our research here john take a look at this one <laughs> tell they us always used to stick a microphone in front of me yeah tell it what was the occasion what was happening there that's a cool shot that was a family reunion um in fact on my father's side the uh lineage the american lineage goes back nine nine generations in that that's a in western new york in fact there's a, a cemetery there where everyone in the cemetery is a relative all the way back to the 1700s mm -hmm. um so that's probably where i'll end up someday anyway um and every name is like all the east coast colleges williams smith brown you know like every every name in that place you know young you know and so i don't know if there's a young well there's brigham young but um so that's that's up there in sort of rural western new york and uh it was a family reunion and they always used to hand me a microphone um and then you know you get older and then you know there's that famous line from a chorus line in in that song uh danced or uh hello 12 hello 13 hello love you know dance for grandma dance for grandma you know that's yeah. what they once you're a singer whatever they always ask you to do it and you know oh, what yeah. Yeah. after you become a professional you're like mm, right. you, I'm not <laughs> you pay me to dance no right. <laughs> and I'm, I'm like the guy i'm like the guy that at at live theater performances when they come out in the audience and and they, they're going to interact with you i'm the one that's like don't you dare talk to me <laughs> i am here as an audience member I do not want to be part of the play tonight. I get paid to be part of the play. Leave me alone. You know, so it's the same way when they say dance for grandma. I'm like, but you, but you say it with a smile, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> he means it. Back yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when I'm in the audience, I'm a civilian. I've you got want to, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, when you're in the supermarket, I would imagine, uh, you know, people, I've had that even happen with my work. If somebody sees me up from one of the shows or network or whatever, uh, they'll peek around the corner and they'll be like, is that, is that, and I've always been surprised by that. Cause I'm like, you know, very approachable. So there's no, you don't have to worry about, but that, that it usually does happen when, you know, you're, you haven't shaved and you've got the baseball cap on and you're just like disheveled or whatever, running to the store to grab something quick or whatever. Um, and I'm sure that happens to you too, is, you know, somebody will recognize you here and there and whatever. And you'll, yeah, well, you know. and after COVID never, cause I always have a mask on, which is yeah. like, yeah, right, like, right, right. You know, and right. when, and when it's likely to happen, let's say I have a show or something, or I'm in town for something yeah, or whatever, when it's, or I'm midtown Manhattan when things were up and, you know, I'm going to see a Broadway show. I'm never ungracious in those moments. I'm always, I always know when I walk yeah. out the door in an area like that, it's likely to happen. And so Absolutely. I always welcome it. I never don't welcome it. I'm sometimes surprised by it. And, you know, one time I was in an antique shop, like one of those huge antique malls that they have here um, in California. And, uh, and I noticed this family was like, kind of like following me around and I knew why, you know, and so, and, and then, you know, they, they got up the nerve to ask me for a picture. And so I, you know, happy about that, you know, happy to do that. I mean, but, uh, if you ever become, I think Betty Davis said it, any actor who ever becomes bored of her fans is finished, you know, oh, yeah. oh, or, yeah. or like you should be. If no one's interested anymore, you're done. You exactly. know, so if someone's yeah. interested, uh, there's a cute story actually of have that happening. There's Are you near a, a church or something? We hear some beautiful bells yeah. in the background. It's nice. Shut up over there. <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> For God's sake. <laughs> so, um, For whom the bell there, tolls. <laughs> yeah. So there was a, so there's a, a, a really great ice cream shop in Los Angeles that actually I think comes out of Portland called salt, salt and straw. And there are a few different locations. And I was in the studio city one, uh, you know, near like where universal studios is. And so I, uh, I go in there and I just get an ice cream, like a normal dude. 
and I get to the register and there's a teenager behind the register and he's like mouth agape and I and and it's LA you know so I don't know like I was you know I figured you know what's going on with this guy and and he dropped my change you know on the floor and I realized oh my god like one of the things that happens is in New York and LA everyone's seen everything right mm -hmm. but teenagers and I remember especially young teenagers like 13 14 I remember how I was so when I was like a Goonies fan if I had seen like Martha Plimpton and I'm behind the register I would have dropped the change too really? it's like an icon for me in fact I did something with Martha Plimpton years later when I was starring on Broadway starring on Broadway like it, when Jersey Boys was a new show I think it's fair to say that for six months, a year, I, I was the biggest star on Broadway for a little while, and and that and I did this uh, reading at the New York Public Library, where um, it's this it's this thing called the Young Lions Society, which is for young supporters of New York Public Library. And Ethan Hawke started this award for young novelists, and I was one of four people reading sections from these co competitors, and it was Ethan Hawke, Robert Sean Leonard. Martha Plimpton and me and I'm sitting back in the green room with these people the biggest star on Broadway but these were like five years older than me people, people from yeah. that I grew up watching and I couldn't barely speak I was so starstruck you admired them yeah yeah and so uh, it's oftentimes like younger people and they get flustered and it's kind of cute because I don't know what to say, yeah. loser I am most of the year, you know. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but you know, you know, actors spend a lot of time, and you know, uh, artists spend a lot of time. Betty Davis had just finished her first autobiography, which is called "The Lonely Life," and she makes a point that it's, that's not that you're. It's not that you don't ever have friends or whatever, but being an artist is a lonesome pursuit people don't understand artists because we are strange we beat to our own drum and there is something constantly solitary about that personality or that kind of personality you're the, the loneliness is that you're a lot of times misunderstood and many of the times between sort of benchmarks or between appearances you're worrying about what's next or am i am i doing well enough or there's always rejection for an actor, at least on that side of things. So you're, why am I being rejected? What's wrong with me? You know, it, there's a lot of those that are insecurities. Now during COVID, everyone's un unemployed. So, uh, and you, and, and there's not much going or so if you want a Broadway show, you can't get one right now anyway. So I think it's probably an interesting time for artistic types or actor types that you have a lot of time to sit around, but you can't, you can't go into that self doubt like you use usually able to, where you're like, well, what's wrong with me that I don't have a job on Broadway right now? No one does. So it, it's an interesting time to reflect on who you are outside of that identity of constantly chasing a job or some artistic pursuit. That's right. That's nothing personal. It's just Broadway's closed and right. Nobody has anywhere to go with it. Exactly right. Exactly right. Um, interesting take. I, I like your perspective on a lot of these things that we're talking about here. And you're very uh, uh, authentic and open and revealing and in, in sharing your life, which I think is actually uh, for a lot of people very refreshing too, because a lot of people don't, or they create this image, or they just have this certain way that they're presenting themselves, and they're, they're very nervous about, uh, you know, ever going off that track. And you're very open, and, and I think that's a great thing. And I think that's probably why, you know, the fans love you too, is because you're real. Maybe you know, and and the uh, here's the other thing. So Dustin Hoffman eventually was, I'll, I'll just keep going back to that sleeping in the bathtub thing. Yeah, yeah. He eventually was confident enough and successful enough to admit that he slept in Gene Hackman's bathtub when he was right. hard on his luck. 
Al Pacino, you know, eventually was successful enough to it became a kind of cute story that he would go to parties just because that would be his only meal. It's what he'd steal from the fridge, you know. Right. But especially today, and, and it started during Jersey Boys, the internet. You can act as cool as you want. You can hire the most expensive publicist ever. You'd be the biggest movie star with a phalanx of publicists around you. Everyone whose job is to protect you and your reputation. But now that everybody has a smartphone and now that there's the internet, whatever, there's no escaping humiliation anymore. You get caught saying something wrong in a restaurant, someone's recording you with a, te with a telephone and you don't even know it. There's no place to hide now. So, well, you I sound think, like me. You sound well, so. I talk about that so much too. Yeah. I think the new. I think the new Hollywood mystique is going to be authenticity. If you can, it's so humiliating the things you have to go through as an artist. If you survive those things and sometimes survive them publicly, public ridicule on the internet. I've lived with that since 2006. All the time. I, you know, one time I went to lunch with Kristen Chenoweth, who's a few years ahead of me, and had, you know, I was, was doing things a few years before I was. Sure, yeah. And I was first experiencing that embarrassing anonymous online criticism. Don't you hate and that stuff? Yeah. I asked her, well, now it, I expect it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Now I'm like, haha, you know, if only you knew the real humiliating things about me. What's you the know? word? Trolls, I guess, yeah. is the word they use. Yeah. I asked, Kristen Chenoweth, I was like, well, what do you do, you know, when you read that stuff about you or that's not true or whatever? And she says, I don't read it anymore. And she said, but I used to, and I'd be, you know, in the fetal position under my kitchen table with my computer, you know, crying. And, uh, you know, it's, um, it's part of life now. So, so, Bring it on. Like when you have nothing to lose, you get pretty brave. Bring it on. I'm still here. I've experienced all the humiliation you could ever throw at an actor. Bring it. You know, <laughs> and that wasn't a real thing. But no, seriously, that, that was the ring that's finger. That's the attitude. The ring, the ring finger. <laughs> but right, the ring finger. But you know what you know, I mean. Well, what you're Bring saying is also very um inspiring to others who are even younger, you know, coming up the ranks. I could see you if you haven't already, and I'm sure you've done it and do it, um, inspire others uh, in ways like, like the stuff that you're talking about right now is great information for somebody who's considering going into these industries and dealing with all these different facets of it, the good, the bad, the ugly. I could see you teaching, mentoring, coaching, consulting, or just sharing that wisdom with others. I mean, I'm working in television, radio and all that. I see all of what you're talking about too. I can, we, we seem to have a lot of similar ways of thinking about things. You definitely have an old school quality to you inside as well. And, and that is evident. Um, I think a lot of this is uh, shareable material that really could and would mentor others because you've been through it, you've experienced it. Well, it's, it's very cool. I, yeah, I mean that's and that's something that I enjoy doing when I do it. You know, a master class usually turns into yeah. discussions of these kind of realities. I I do understand why so many people try to dissuade you from a career in the arts because, you know, I think it was Laura Linney. Laura Linney was years ahead of me, but she was also Brown University graduate and a, a brilliant, brilliant woman, you know, um, academically, but also uh, artistically. And, uh, and she said somewhere, you can be the most accomplished, you know, sensitive, intelligent person in Hollywood, and they can still make you feel like garbage, you know. And, and then, you know, I just finished the Betty Davis autobiography. Like every chapter is a story like that. You know, it, what, what she had was the moxie to fight back. And, um, and that can get you in a lot of trouble fighting back. And, and, it, and it can get you ostracized and it can get you in the reputation for being difficult. And, 
it kind of worked in her favor. Didn't necessarily always work in mine. But the, but the thing is that at least you have your integrity. And the other thing too, that's changed a lot. Do you try to ignore it at sometimes and just say it's put comes with the territory, whatever? I don't or... want it to come to the, with the territory. I want know. to be respected by the people I work with. The oh, you sound like me. For. Are you my cousin? You sound like right. me. <laughs> yeah, maybe. but you know what? So you get, they kill you. Is this an East Coast thing maybe? Or <laughs> they kill you for expecting to be treated well. You know, so, but things have changed big yeah. time. Before yes. COVID happened, there was Me Too. Harvey Weinstein is languishing in a jail cell. There are things changing. And I think on the other side of this, there might actually be, now, not every actor deserves the dignity that someone like me might want. Some of them are just as much of rats of some of the people that are, you know, but, um, but, there, but, uh, you know, uh, but if you want to have, um, an unabusive work environment, I think that it's becoming even coming into more focus now than ever before. Right. You know, right. so, uh, you know, um, but God, you know, young people coming up or young women coming up who might feel a little bit harangued or harassed or whatever, cause those are realities. Right now, while there is not a lot to audition for, read Betty Davis's autobiography. Read how, you know, I guarantee you things were worse in 1930 than they are like. Actually, yeah. Now, with exactly. that sort of stuff, but she never succumbed to it. And, she, and, and she's recognized as probably one of the most iconic movie stars of all time. So you can get around it, but you gotta have cojones of steel, man or woman. What did you think of Joan Crawford having created that Joan Crawford image and, and the whole thing? Uh, did you admire her? Because uh, they say she, underneath all of that shell, she was actually very vulnerable and she was, uh, you know, she was very cognizant of being criticized and worked hard not to be and always tried to control the image. And But underneath that shell that she created in that image, there was almost, it was like a little girl underneath. That's the other side of things. And that, st that side still exists. Oh, There's sure. still very image-based performers and actors who don't want for a moment to show any vulnerability. What I'm saying about now in the age of the internet, if you're not authentic, you will be outed eventually. Oh yeah. Because there's no place to hide now. Like I said, so there's some people who have perfect, amazing people protecting their image. But it's if you're not nice or whatever, or you've got some vice or whatever, it will come out. So my approach now, and I think it's for my own future, because I've achieved things already, but going forward, I hope to do more things. My approach now is pretty much be who you're, who you're willing. I'm a private person, so I'm not going to put it all out there. But be who you're willing to be, you know, be authentic to who you are. At least when you're doing this, when you're talking to someone or you're talking to uh, a fan or a friend or whatever, be who you are or who right. you're willing to be in that moment. I'm, I'm not going to tell everybody my personal business. Yeah. So that it's like they say about lying or as opposed to the truth. The truth, you'll always remember. You, you don't have to remember what lie did I tell. So, you know, um, stick to st uh, stick to to what you can really stand behind and you'll never get in that situation where you're like, you're have to backtrack or whatever. And, and, um, and I'll say that that tendency in me has maybe not always made me the most popular with potential directors or other actors or whatever, but it's gotten me noticed in other places that I never would have imagined having access to like politics and things, mm -hmm. you know, where, where, authenticity is, or at least the appearance of authenticity, right? deeply uh, valuable. Have you, I'm sure you've come across people that you thought were authentic and bought into everything they packaged and presented. And then it turned out uh, they weren't really exactly what that image and that presentation was, uh, was really like. I've gone into all this with my eyes wide open. So, uh, no, I'm always aware that that's, uh, especially with actors and theater people and entertainment people, 
I'm always aware that what we think of someone, you know, your most famous wallflower, you know, uh, right. imagine whoever you would think of actors or whatever, the most famous wallflower could actually be the worst person. And the one yes. who's great at playing, you know, raving lunatics or something is maybe the, the best person. So, or the kindest person. So, um, right. I agree. But, you know, so just to like, I like to, one of the things I don't like about social media is that someone who is not nice at all can have like 8 million followers, yes. a bunch of kids who like look up to them and they're actually, you know, because social media has this fiction of it's like, that's our real life. Some of these people get adulation or um, maybe not the best. One of the things I first started tweeting at the beginning of Twitter years ago was be careful who you follow. Yes. No just understood what I was talking about. Oh but, yeah. I've been saying that for years too. Yeah. I yeah. mean, but I mean that in the, I mean that in a deeper way. You're right. Be careful who you look up to because the, this, you know, it's hard to know who's reliable. Everyone's living their life. Well, now on the internet and everything for a, to sh to show a certain image, and it's a lot of there's a lot of superficial and uh, things that just don't really have a lot of legs or foundation or anything underneath. It's just that quick little quick hit. It's that quick photo, that quick thing to get all that quick buzz, and then try to be the best and number one and all of that, and yeah. nothing underneath any of that. Speaking of superficial. <laughs> Isn't that cool? This tell, is. Tell us about that. Yeah. Superficial. Ding, ding, ding. It looks so great it. when you do that. Doesn't it? Yeah. This is, I've been working on these. And it, you know, so you had said earlier, this is, a, this is something that has helped me a lot. Like to have for the last 10 or 12 years or so. Um, you know, I make artwork also. And so that's just my most current self portrait. And so, uh, there is a way to stay creative, even when you can't do what, you know, you love the best, which you know, right. for me, getting out in front of an audience or what I really love the best is, is being on a, a film set. So the, yeah. That is the most delectable way to, to work. And also, yeah. Some of the most elusive. It's it's the hardest to come by for me, at least. But uh, there's nothing like it. Um, you know, they're asking all. A lot of people are asking for Jasper. Please bring on Jasper. Is he still laying at your feet? Well, he's here. He's kind of scratching in his ear and kind of. Uh, they love they love food. Children that burst in the room and jump on the lap, and they love pets. <laughs> yeah. Well, Jasper is. Uh, it's, he's, it's going to be his dinner time soon. Tell us about Jasper for those who are saying, "Well, who's what? Who's Jasper?" Jasper is my little dog, and he's a he's a he's a little mix, and he's you know smooth. He's not too furry, and has like like those little desert foxes that have those big ears. Jasper yes. has big ears. Yeah, and um, he's six, and uh, he was adopted, and uh, cool. he's nice. You know, my best little buddy. He's a now he's. Rubbing his head on the car. Yeah. There's Saint Claudia says the cutest pup, and Evelyn says wolf, wolf. Yeah. Jasper, please. Um, really, really cool. I also want to show you. Oh, gonna, someone says they look beautiful on camera. Yeah, they really do. Yeah, this mm -hmm. nice and sparkly. Yeah, and there's take a long time to make, but as you know, we've had a lot of time on our hands with COVID. Yes. And, uh, and I list, you know, and I listened to things that I learned things like, so I listened to Betty Davis's whole autobiography. I just finished it today. And I, you know, I listen to podcasts and stuff while I work because I need my hands. Yeah. And eyes. Absolutely. We actually, we have another one here. Oh yeah. Now I'll tell you something fun about that one. That one someday uh, maybe not too long from now, we can take a field trip to the Obama presidential library 
And if they decide to cycle that out into the things they're showing, it is in the collection of the Obama Presidential Library. That's cool, isn't it? It used yeah. to be in his private office, which my friends from the White House tell me, mm -hmm. which I think could potentially be their euphemism for bathroom. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I don't okay. care. Right. Yeah. You know, um, anyway, uh, I'm working on a new one for a new president. So now you and your listeners know, or our or audience members who are watching. Yeah, the viewers, the loveities. <laughs> I've gotten better at those. That was 2012. I've gotten better at them, but but it's you, you still get the point with that one. Oh yeah, absolutely. There you go. Yeah. Heinz catch up. <laughs> yeah, that one's called. That's, that's my, that was my birthday portrait I did this year. That is cool. I'm trying to make get myself on to. Oh, there. Hi. There you go. Um. Yeah, I did that. I did a limited series of that this year for my birthday, and I probably do another type of portrait for my birthday next year. Um. Yeah. So, how do you describe it for people watching? How do you describe the kind of art that it is? How do you define it? Warholian pop. Yeah meets Liberace. <laughs> That's perfect. That's unique. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. 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 This is cool. They're all, uh, they well, love this. Fine. Of course the, and of course the Campbell soup can is a Warhol reference easily. It's right. Like, I treat the Campbell soup as like the canvas, you know? Mm -hmm. Exactly. I mean, you've covered it all literally. Now, that one, that one is uh, I'm very proud of because that one is uh, is clearly you can understand the statement that that one's making uh, COVID. That one's called Hindsight 2020. <laughs> and I just went to Target yesterday, and the shelves are empty again. Are so, they really? So this is the second time in oh 2020 that we have a toilet paper shortage, and and. Of course, I don't want. I, have to, I don't feel like I always have to spell it out, but I'm still on the last one for a minute. But I, I don't think I have to spell it out or should have to spell it out. But the point that I like about this that I think is hilarity is that it's dressed up with rhinestones like this unbelievably valuable, amazing thing. Oh. And when you go to Target and you need toilet paper and all the shelves are empty, then you will agree with me that a gilded roll of toilet paper is kind of like what you're thinking of. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I just right. think it's perfect commentary on this year. It's priceless. Absolutely. That's, I have always loved that, that design so much that I wanted to kind of exalt it because I think that that's one of the best package designs in all of package design, the, the Heinz, uh, which is, that's a big thing in Britain, you know? Sure. Um, so that one I've, it's weird, you know, you know how like when you're a high school student, you have a crush on somebody, you know, like I go to the, so I've been doing this for like more than 10 years and I've had a crush on that <laughs> when I see it in the grocery store and not so often here in America, Yeah, more ubiquitous in the UK or I think Australia, but I've had a crush on that one forever. And so I decide during COVID, I had the time to actually do it. And I think it just, it just looks exquisite it's really really cool yeah i like the blue too it's really it's really very that's a very not very ordinary color for product packaging right turquoise so that's another reason i'm drawn to it this one this one is called art for your wiener and uh and i and that's purposely a little dirty but you know when i first did my first show of art and first introduced art, I bedazzled a can of spam only because I wanted to deliver the title, Wham Bam Thank You Spam, and in my first art opening. And this one is similar. Now, this one I debuted at the same time that the whole, the first Anthony Weiner scandal was happening. <laughs> And I had a manager at the time who was like, you have to do put out a picture of this next to Anthony Weiner. And I was like, you know what? 
I'm not going to do that. And we yeah. had a horrible argument about it. And I said, I'm not going to do it. And, and I said, you know why? Because when you make fun of politicians, they yeah. always remember it. And, and, and his wife works for Hillary Clinton. And so years later, when I'm a presidential appointee for Barack Obama and Hillary Clinton is the secretary of state, I'm glad I didn't go after her <laughs> assistant. Like I was right. So, so I had a little bit of mischief, but I also you had uh, black acumen and, okay. and I, I didn't step in it with that one. And a little intuition, I think in there too, which came to, wow. to pass. <laughs> you're not, you're not, you're probably not standing in good stead to take pot shots at someone who's down if you also are worthy of some criticism, you know? So there's another one. Yeah. Milk duds. That oh. one reminded me of the yellow brick road from the wizard of yeah. Oz. Yeah. Yeah. Not to mention the fact that you eat milk duds when you're at the movie theater. So I kind of configured them like a little section of the yellow brick road. Very cool. Premium. That was, the, yeah. that was my first, that was my first kind of, where I was saying this artwork is inspired by Andy Warhol. And that's why that tomato soup can is on the top. But of course, years later, um, you know, the soup can has kind of stayed as a theme, but taken on its own, you know, things to keep. Yeah. I feel that artists build on things. Yeah. You know? And so, uh, and you don't even sometimes know what you're starting when you start it. Juanita in South Africa asks, love the artwork. How long does it take to create one, a piece? A lot of time. But I'm also, you, Juanita, nice to meet you. But for some of my fans who've known me for a long time, no. And this is probably one of the reasons I succeeded so well with such a hard part as Jersey Boys is that I am a meticulous preparer and a very meticulous worker. And before COVID happened and I was right back into the artwork, which takes lots of time, I was traveling a lot to do all these concerts and everything. And sometimes I'm on a plane for six hours or whatever. And I, I speak a little, and, but can write and read somewhat uh, Chinese. And, and that's, I probably, uh, if I didn't have these kind of things to do, would probably have, I would say maybe a diagnosable case of some OCD. And so for me, it's a healthy way to exercise those feelings. Um, and Chinese calligraphy, if you're into things that are meticulous like that, yeah, yeah. Are, is so, so fun. I mean, it's just it scratches that itch so well. Yeah. Uh, but you, as you can imagine with these pieces and I'm selling them, you know, the art pieces that during COVID, People that means I have to make them. I don't have right. any time for the Chinese calligraphy right now. It's either it's uh, whenever I have free time, I'm at the table You're making it. it. People are asking where can they find them? Where can they get these pieces, John? Um, well, right now, and this is sad. I, some of my fans who bought my art at gallery shows, like right after the Jersey Boys movie, would be sad to learn this. They might not know, but my gallerist passed away. Uh. In in 2020. Sorry to hear that. I don't know if it was COVID. I, I don't really know. But when I, so when I came, when this happened and I came back and decided, okay, I'm going to start making stuff again and selling it, he wasn't around. Mm -hmm. So I, so right now the series that I've been working on in 2020, and there are several pieces, including some of the ones you showed, yeah. right now they're on my shop of my website, johnloadyoung.com. I'm doing them myself with no middleman right now. So you so are your own. Middleman was literally no longer here, you know, so, sadly. So that answers that. Yeah, <laughs> we have a couple more. Somebody brought up this one and we actually have it here. Uh, Spam. Yeah. yeah. That's the one. Yeah. And I'll tell you what, Jim, that was, you know, right really in the beginning, that was my first show. And I'll tell you about online ridicule, or whatever. They came for me big time. But now, 10 years later, I've been in galleries and it's a, and that show, which I was like, again, like, bring it on. I didn't mind that they came for me with that show because that show was a benefit for AIDS Project Los Angeles. So any sale that I made, yeah, go ahead, make fun of me, laugh at me. Like I'm 
my friend Allie Willis, who wrote The Color Purple, and she also passed away this year. Uh, she hosted it at her crazy fun house that she called Al the Allie Willis Museum of Kitsch. And, uh, and we raked it in for APLA. Um, so, you know, I think if you start your career uh, with nice intentions, you yes. almost can do anything, <laughs> you know, I, as long as you as long as you prove you're a good person to begin yeah. with, you get people give you a wide berth. You know what? Oh, I, I love that. this one. Remember, I, you showed that other piece, and there was that not treated soup can on the top of it, right? It was mm -hmm. just a, a can of soup with nothing going on. Yeah. Eventually, that worked its way into my artwork. Uh, I started using it as an element of my pieces, or in this case of the one that I showed you today, as the canvas itself. And this, this, uh, you know, I was already starting to do those society portraits. Then, uh, this is those are all real Campbell soup cans, um, and I started to see the stars and stripes there. So that's mm. you know, and my my uh, concept with that one is sort of like was kind of sort of like a kindergarten project. Obviously the work on it is more intricate than a kindergartner could do, but yeah. the idea of, of like a school project, you know, like I wanted it to look a little bit like a chalkboard, like the chalkboard lettering or whatever. And, and the, you know, um, how a kid would, would, would stack these to look like this. And then yeah. you see there's a yellow can there. Yeah. And that was a special edition can that came out at like the, I don't know, the 40th anniversary of, you know, Andy Warhol's soup cans or something. And that's a little picture of Andy Warhol and the story of his, his uh, appropriating Campbell's soup in his art. Mm, yeah. So it's a little bit of a lesson that. that yeah. Way. There's a couple others uh, along the way too, Snickers and yeah. you got KFC in there. We're getting these hungry, are, getting hungry looking at these too. <laughs> these are early ones. These are early ones. And that's not real chicken in there. That nah. Sometimes that's the most work is making things look real. And then, of course, and that was decorating my poster, you know, which is, yeah. you know, there have yeah. been some variations on that one. Yeah, I so love this too on your website. One of those for, like, the first one of those that I ever sold was uh, to benefit Amfar. It's it's sold on auction for ten thousand dollars to benefit the American Foundation for AIDS Research. So, I love this from the website. That's a really cool look. Yeah, that's a backstage look, and and believe me, I I'll, I look a little worse after a concert than that sometimes. <laughs> but, <laughs> but you know, that's the fantasy version of uh, backstage after a concert. That's it. Tell us about this too. I think this photo is from Keith Bernstein, uh, yep. photo, photo credit. Um, tell now, us, yeah, this that was a, that was a great. That was, of course, that's the pizza scene from you know where Frankie is out on his first date with the woman who becomes his wife and Jersey Boys and that was shot on location in Los Angeles at a place called Casa Bianca in Eagle Rock that is an old throwback uh, it still looks like the places would have looked in that era which is why they chose it on location but if you look over my right hand there's that yeah. little empty space on the wall to the right of the lamp and where that other picture is now, this photograph signed by me and Renee hangs there in that exact booth. And you can go to this place in Eagle Rock and you can, uh, it's so meta because you can see, you know, you can sit in that booth right next to this photograph. That is really cool. That is absolutely awesome. Love that. It's a great shot too. And uh, we've got another one here too. That's really cool. Of course, also from Keith Bernstein. Yeah, that was fun. That was, uh, that was the day we shot Sherry on um, the Ed Sullivan show. And um, you know, you never knew what you were going to find on the soundstage. Cause when you walk onto the soundstage, you just see the backs of the flats, yeah, right? You know, you see the two by fours and the paneling you walk around the corner and they've built this whole, I mean, it's 1960s right in front of you. Um, for those of you who have done the Warner brothers tour, we shot this right across on, on stage four, which is right across uh, 
the little alley from uh, where Ellen shoots her show. Oh yeah. What was it like being a part of Jersey Boys? I mean, that must have been absolutely extraordinary. And then this opportunity for it to become a film as well, sort of like a full circle for you, John. Again, brilliant performance, perfect choice to have you. I'm sure, you know, you, you had an opportunity to have uh, wonderful words come from Frankie Valley himself. Uh, and so many people are saying, love Jersey Boys. Uh, what a group of handsome guys, those red jackets, great scene, drop dead gorgeous, all the cool words. But for you, and we appreciate all these great comments from the viewers around the world and the lovities. Thanks for all these great comments, everybody. We love you guys. Um, but for you, what was it like? I mean, uh, sort of role of a lifetime kind of a situation um, and, and brilliant in it as well. Um. Well, when you remember the kid that was in the basement of that cornerstone bookshop in a tiny little small town, you know, by the border of Canada, uh, moving around with his military family, you know, dreaming of Broadway, yeah, then you, it doesn't take much to imagine what it must feel like to then star in a Broadway show that is a phenomenal hit and in a major amazing role like that. Then not to mention the picture that you just show, you know, and then you take that to Hollywood and, you know, I, I made, yeah. And that's, and you know, here's another full circle story for you. And this photo is from Annie Leibovitz. Annie Leibovitz, right. And those red jackets, you know, Clint Eastwood had one made for him too, that you wore to our premiere. So there were five of us at that premiere, Red Jackets. Anyway, um, that part of the back lot on Warner Brothers that we're walking in front of is in so many movies now as like, you know, New York City or New mm -hmm. Jersey, whatever. But they built that back lot area for the movie that I mentioned to you very early in this interview that I was entranced by when I was, uh, you know, a little kid in 1982. They built that for the movie Annie. And so sometimes they call it Annie Street. Um, I think the guy who built it was, I might be wrong, Hennessy or something. So sometimes they call it Hennessy Street. At any rate, um, there I am on a back lot set from a movie that I loved when I only dreamed of being mm -hmm. in a movie someday or didn't even expect that I would, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, um, and you can go, if you have that picture on your phone when things are back and you know the warner brothers tour is back up you can show them that picture and ask them to show you where that is because all the tour guides will know where that is well i have to tell you uh aside from all these other great comments i'm seeing here and this is really nice too besides the real frankie you are the best ever frankie Nice comment from Everlyn. Uh, Maureen says, which I think is really nice, I must confess I watch that movie every weekend. It takes my mind off COVID stuff for a while. That is really a beautiful statement. Nice. Yeah, and uh, Louise says, so happy Jersey Boys is reopening on the West End in the spring. Missed that theater so much. Uh, really beautiful comments uh, from everybody here, and we appreciate them as well. Got another great shot here too, John. Um, and again, of course, Clint Eastwood there with you in that shot. And here's uh, with Frankie Valley himself. Yeah. This one from uh, Ramona Rosales, this uh, shot, we appreciate that. That was for Parade Magazine. We had the front cover, um, you know, that, and uh, as a kid kind of growing up in, in, towns that were sort of that would feel like your typical midwestern town or middle american towns you know the parade is an insert that goes in the sunday paper and right yeah so that was really exciting for me that that was for parade magazine and much like you know something like reader's digest which my grandmother read and that's yeah my aunts and everything you see it on everyone's you know bedside yeah. table. i knew that that people all over the country what are the politicians say that ordinary Americans would be very excited to see that this show that had since become a big hit was going to be coming to the movies and uh, to see us for with the real Frankie Valley. I mean, that's uh, you just, it, 
again, like I, I told you, I just finished Betty Davis's autobiography and so many of the things that she said, and of course she had a, a phenomenal movie career, but so many things that she said in that book are things I could relate to, you know, when she was younger and she was on set with someone who was an, a, an actor that she used to watch when she was going to the, you know, the, the, the five cent movies with her mom, you know, and had, and, you know, didn't have the proverbial pot to pee in, you know? Yeah. Um, and then suddenly she's in a movie with them. Like that's, that's kind of, of course, how I felt when I'm being directed by Clint, Clint Eastwood or, or even, you know, the original cast of Jersey boys, uh, Des McEnough, the director, you know, I saw the who's Tommy, uh, when I was in high school and I knew he was the director of that. And you never forget a name that's that kind of distinct. And uh, I always thought he was Michael David, our producer with the big beard. I, I didn't know until rehearsal or auditions that, oh, Des McEnough isn't that guy with the beard. But, you know, at any rate, um, then someone that you kind of, whose shows you admired when you were only dreaming of doing it is suddenly your director, you know, um, that's pretty cool. Or not to mention the most obvious, glaringly obvious uh, parallel to what Betty Davis is saying about her own being starstruck on her early movies. Like talk about scenes with, with Christopher Walken, you know? Yeah. yeah so, um, yeah. you know, I, I, it, I've had a small amount of those experiences, but in as big a way and as impactful a way as, as she mentions over and over again in her autobiography, um, you really admire her, don't you? She's really somebody who well, yeah. she had moxie. Yes, that real New England Yankee she talks about. Yeah, you know what? She's my one unfinished so far. I have a portrait of her. Oh, really? I'm finished right now, but yeah. So yeah, she had moxie, and she went up against the powers that be. And she, even though an actor is supposed to step aside and be directed, and you know that. Uh, uh, what's his name? Um, uh, Alfred Hitchcock called us, called actors cattle. You know, there's some of us are not just models or pretty faces. Some of us are real artists. And in my case, and it's turned out to kind of be this way, I would rather not work unless I can be an artist. And so my visual art or my concerts are you know, very creative things where I kind of uh, have some control over whether I um, am artistically satisfied. And, uh, you know, and Betty Davis was not only so dedicated to her own principles, but she succeeded in spite of the fact that the powers that be do not like people who stand up for themselves. And she still was hugely successful. And the reason she was, and this is why I'm so audience focused, is that is that when you are bringing in the bacon for an entire studio, Warner Brothers, the public makes a star, not Jack Warner. And I'm kind of quoting her when I say that, but I totally agree. You are nothing if you have no audience. And so if you're not audience focused and you're self focused, you deserve it if it's if it starts to go downhill for you. Am I uh, looking in the mirror? I say the same things all uh, the time. You've got it. You've got it. You that you. Uh, I agree. Least, it's, that's what I it's about. Least, I at least believe it. You know, and it's so true. Yeah, it's uh, true. I agree a hundred percent. I'm loving what you're saying, John, because this well, audience here will tell you that that's what it's all about. And and as far as. Uh, your ability to be able to like stand up for yourself and, and, and do projects that you really care about and be involved in causes and things that you care about. Was that always John or did that take time, experience, wisdom, age, all those things for you to say, you know what, I, I want to do things that really matter to me and touch my heart and soul. Sometimes I feel like I have something to say or something to contribute. And when Jersey Boys started to become a big runaway Broadway hit, one of the things I learned very early on is that you can direct that audience enthusiasm to uh, attention for certain things, like uh, 
supporting certain charities or certain certain ideas or whatever. And sometimes the overwhelming love for the performer or the show is such that you can say, "Hey, I'm trying to um, support this program." Like VH, like back then, one of the ones I supported was the John Varvatos's uh, VH1 Save the Music, which put uh, music instruments into schools for kids. Ah, beautiful, beautiful. So you can say, "Hey, I've got." these thousands of people and at that point there was no facebook and uh there was no twitter there was no instagram and i'll, I'll tell you the one thing that the one thing that i you know i always thought when people say i have no regrets or i always thought of regret as something where you're like oh i could have done something differently right i've learned now uh, as i get older that sometimes you regret something that you wish could have happened that didn't and you it's not your fault so one of the things I regret, one of my great regrets, is there are some, uh, for example, Broadway denizens right now who are in one show. No one really like outside of Broadway would know who they are, but because of the way it is right now, they have 30,000 Instagram followers and they were not the star of the show when it opened or whatever. And it wasn't a best musical tone. It wasn't a huge show like Jersey Boys, whatever, but they have like 40,000 followers, a huge platform, right? Or like, of course, Lin-Manuel Miranda would anyway, but someone like him with, what is it? 2 million followers on Twitter or something like that. Sometimes when I have something going, a few years ago, I remember, and some of my fans might know what I'm talking about. It wasn't my best moment, but I got really annoyed because there's someone I know in real life who's one of those people who's not very nice in real life or charitable. And uh, with like 4 million followers, many of whom were young people, going shopping, uh, you know. And I was working for Barack Obama, a president of the United States, in uh, schools in Iowa, yeah. with little kids who had no resources. I know what you're talking about. And yeah. I had like 400 people who knew I was doing it because I only have 400 Instagram followers at that point. And I thought I have 400 people, and this person has four million, and is put and has, you know, it seems like priorities two million have likes on a picture yeah. of trying on clothes in a dress right. store. Yeah. Right. And I'm working with kids who are putting arts in their school for the Obamas, the first African American family in the White House, and no one knows, you know. So it's yeah, yeah. That's my yeah. one regret is that I, sometimes there's something that I wish more people could see and be aware of and if the timing is right whatever that will happen again and it's possibly likely i don't count on anything but with this new president coming in who you know was only barack obama's vice president you know it's like a lot of the same faces are coming back many of them are promoted to better positions now in this administration it's not outside the realm of reason that I could be doing something on the arts for, for the Bidens, whether officially or not, I will be, you know, and to know that there's people that have 4 million or 8 million followers on Instagram and the best that they could offer during COVID is that, you know, the mall opened and they went shopping, you know, it's just like, yeah. Yeah, or well, they did backflips in their swimming pool and they've got a book deal, a movie oh, no. deal, and uh, sponsorships. <laughs> we get into this, some of us, some of us. And like, again, I go back to Betty Davis just because I've been listening to her for 30 hours now, you know, with, while I do artwork. She was an artist. She wanted to be an artist. She wanted to be an actor. She didn't want to be a personality. You mentioned Joan um, Crawford, Crawford. Yeah. who was all about image. Betty Davis was the one who'd show up with no makeup on for a meeting with a director and the director would be like, you're not sexy. And she'd be like, I'm an actress, you know, this is two different, you know, uh, um, I don't know. I, I think that the, um, the point I'm trying to make is have you ever wanted sometimes to sometimes see like all eyes on something and you're like, well, wait a second. My friends and I have these cool ideas that we just need exposure for. Right. Although I will say this, the ones that the eyes that are on the things I do are yes. so supportive of those things. 
Right. And that's why sometimes I think, especially when it has to do with someone who could be a beneficiary, these little kids or something, or something that needs some support, and that you know, there's only so much that my my amount my people can do. If it's a million people, there's there's a bigger chance of you know, I I don't want to get too down that road because you yeah. know I heard making the same complaint. Kanye like, West, you know, well, you know, <laughs> right. Kanye West is making the same de- yeah. complaint. He was like, "If only I had two million more followers, I could have four million more dollars." You know, I'm not. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that people like me go into this because we want to mean something to people. That's right. That's and how the I more people it. you reach, the more of those connections you can make, the more people you can maybe help or inspire. Believe me, I didn't go into this for the attention because name me my five other Broadway hits that I've been in, you know. So, uh, uh, you know, it's uh, – let's just say that's a goal now, especially post-COVID when things are back. It's a goal to continue to bring more people to the party and to hopefully have uh, meaningful things to, uh, to get behind, either mm-hmm. as an actor or a, a person. And exactly. That that can make an impact. Maybe right. I'm not meant to be an actor entertainer for the rest of my life. Maybe maybe I'll get into areas where I can actually make policy or something. But I like to be a nudge, you know, with art. I like to push things a little bit in that that kind of creative way, and uh, with ideas and. You know, or like, you know, I've always admired and I've said this many times, like, for example, Tom Hanks, great actor, everyone loves him. But at the time that he did Philadelphia, 1993, we were a country that was deeply afraid of AIDS and people with it. Right. And very kind to them. And I remember when that first started, you'd be afraid to even breathe next to someone with it. Isn't that ironic now with covid yeah, full you circle. Can get it from breathing next to someone, but it was because Tom Hanks was so beloved a person, and he played this person afflicted with AIDS. Suddenly, I think the world took a collective breath and felt a different sort of sympathy for the real life people with it because of the work that an actor did. And got to give credit to, of course, to the people who conceived of that project. One of whom, Mark Platt. You know that name, Platt, whose son won the Tony a few years ago for uh, Dear Evan Hansen? Right. The producer of Wicked. You have to thank Mark Platt, too, for that, changing the world, making people sympathetic sympathetic that weren't before because he produced that movie. So, you know, he also then gave us Wicked, which, of course, is epic for teenage girls and their mothers for the rest of history now, you know? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. There, so, so those things, the, the fact that you can mean something to someone, the fact even just, okay, like Jersey Boys, all right? If Jersey Boys becomes one of those movies that people watch at Thanksgiving together with their family or during the holidays, which it is becoming, from p- feedback I get, it, it's one of those movies that actually has a little Christmas scene in it. Just yeah, like yeah. The Godfather has a Christmas scene where Michael and uh, where Pacino and uh, Diane Keaton are shopping together, you know, uh, during Christmas. It it's become a Christmas movie just because one little Christmas scene. If Jersey boys becomes that, and I never do another movie, just knowing that families that different generations together will watch that movie. Mm -hmm. And during those moments of closeness and togetherness that we all remember from the holidays or wish for during the holidays, um, that could be enough for me, you know, uh, I still have to eat, so I got to come up with other things. But um, but in terms of legacy, uh, you, to answer your question from before, how does it feel? I remember what it was like to sit with my grandfather and my cousin and my aunt, and you know, people, and watch uh, things like The Godfather, you know, in, uh, during the holidays, and hold up in their house in Queens where it's blizzarding outside, and the magic of Hollywood brings you together as a family. It's that's pretty cool to know that you're part of someone's dream life. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree a hundred percent. I feel like I'm, you know, listening to uh, myself and so much of this. Uh, I do have, um, I I mean, it's really important. You do work that matters, work that inspires. I'm all about inspiring people and lifting them up. And I'm, I'm 
definitely not an extremist. I'm not on that or that. I'm probably because I'm a Libra. So I'm all about balance and harmony. I like to bring people together and unify. We might not all get everything you know that we want, but if we can at least come to the table and at least break bread and that makes the earth spin more smoothly on its axis rather than all the crazy other stuff that goes on. And I really think it's important to do work that lifts people because as you're lifting others, you're being lifted as well. And uh, I think it's, it's more than high time to really focus on those things. Sometimes quanti uh, quality is more important than, uh, you know, quantity and well, let, me, let me go with you on the zodiac on that zodiac yeah so i need people like you because i'm a cancer a double cancer i need people like you to bring me to the table and draw me out of that shell right but also because i tend to cloister and i'm shy if i'm gonna go do something that is opposite of my nature which is that extroverted gregarious or whatever or being there for other people I want to believe in it, you know, right. because otherwise I want to stay in my shell and work on my artwork, you know? Right. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, I think that's another dynamic there. And uh, the, people like me require people like you to expose us like this to people. Like hopefully there's some people here. Oh, you know, lots of people who care about what we're talking about, or it means something to them or inspires them. Uh, right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. And I've got Virgo rising too. <laughs> so it's really cool stuff. Uh, I'm, well, I'm a double cancer. So whatever that people who know the Zodiac. Can, oh, can I show you something that I think is kind of funny? I was, signing, I was signing so many. Isn't that beautiful? What she wrote? Son, well, that, isn't that beautiful? That's how I started. I yep. was eight years old watching and, PBS specials, PBS, PBS specials with Broadway stars, you know, doing their, yeah numbers i was eight you're inspiring uh enchanted says laborers rule thank you very much okay and uh double cancer jason uh, hey. jill, jill jason's a double cancer really cool. yeah. i'm so sorry for you <laughs> <laughs> that's funny you were going to show something you said yeah so i was i i'm working on a big series and i was signing all these art pieces so i've got look wait i gotta get see that it looks like a bloody cuticle but i sign all my art pieces with a thumbprint but here so i was signing so many things yesterday that i've got i've got paint still on my in my cuticle anyway um the ring is cool too well, tell us about that ring oh this this guy is uh some of you who follow me know this good uh, lazaro and he's a, a jewelry maker in Soho in New York. Um, kind of made his mark with stuff for people like uh, Steve Tyler of Aerosmith and whatever. And I just really like, I like this one because it looks like a shield sort of. And I, when I was a kid, I was into castles and armor and everything. So uh, I have a few pieces of his. Um, but anyway, the, most of them are one of a kind. And I like, and I also this kind of has some of that shiny stuff going on that you know I like now. And on stage, it sort of glistens, so. But it's a casual ring for me. I wear I wear this in my casual life. Very nice. Well, look at this shot. I love this shot. Again, from Ramona Rosales. Look at that. Are you jumping or are you actually hanging from string like marionettes? <laughs> it's hard to tell. Oh, we were. Yeah, we were jumping. We had to do that several, several times. It's join you know what I always thought when I saw this one, I was like, this is great. I mean, it's really energetic and everything. And I was doing a Kung Fu kick there, but I was like, well, I hope Jersey boys is in a movie and that they're promoting with this picture in like the middle East. Cause like the biggest insult that you can make in the middle East is showing someone the bottom of your shoe. Yeah, so that's I'm not going to be a movie star in the middle East if they ever put this one out. <laughs> It's like a big F you to the whole middle, you know, that was not my intention. Yeah. But done with love. And uh, <laughs> that is funny, but it, it is a cool shot. I mean, God, uh, here's another, this is from Keith again, Bernstein. That's a great shot. That was a fun day. Yeah. That's, huh? in, that's in one of the actual theaters on Broadway, the street Broadway in Los Angeles, downtown Los Angeles. 
it has a bunch of Broadway style theaters there. And we, uh, it might have been the Orpheum, I don't remember which theater it was. Oh, yeah. But, you know, they, of course, they use those as locations a lot. And this is one of those funny scenes that I've talked about where Clint Eastwood, uh, you know, because a, a lot of the audience, when they show the audience watching us, yeah, um, you know, they're in the dark, they're silhouettes. So Clint actually uses inflatable dummies to sit in the seats and and had and there were a few extras but not a lot and then they filled in the rest with cgi so w it was an interesting lesson in learning to pretend to play a full audience when you've got like literally mannequins and an otherwise empty space that's later filled in with cgi and this is one of the ones where they do show us doing this scene and they turn around and they show you the audience and i can tell where the cgi is because i was you know, that was my vantage point the whole time, the whole day we were shooting there. You know, mm -hmm. you know, for people who don't know movies, you you get through maybe two or three pages in a day. So we that was a whole day that that yeah. set. Yeah, amazing, really. It is. Here's another one. This is from Pete Souza. Yep. Yeah, I mean that was. And this was is this in Japan? No, this was the state dinner for Japan. State dinner for Japan, right. Obama's second to last state dinner at the White House. Mm. Um, and, you know, and right under Eric Bergen's hand is a white haired guy sitting next to a blonde haired wife. Mm -hmm. And that is Joe Biden and Jill Biden. Mm. Wow. So right between the first two guys on from the left. Yeah. Joe Biden and Jill Biden. Very that cool. was pretty great you know and Nancy Pelosi was in there and the, all these dignitaries we, most of the people there were his cabinet members and we there were the only know. like civilians great what, what was that feeling like to be performing for that audience to have them there and really enjoy this evening of celebration it, it was great except it was probably like the 1400th time that I sung Sherry right <laughs> and, I, and I live in Los Angeles and this was April and I was having trouble with the high notes and Sherry for the first time ever because I can sing that in my sleep now. I've done it so much. And I was like, what the hell is going on? And it wasn't until I got back to the hotel afterward and I was like, oh, my God, you went to Washington, D.C. at cheek pear at, at peak cherry blossom season allergy season oh yeah you didn't take your flonase and you didn't take your claritin because you live in los angeles where you never have <laughs> and so now do you know that because i never know when i'm going to be called to sing somewhere at a moment's notice i take allergy medicine every day now even though i live in southern california because that was my lesson i had to learn in front of barack obama uh you know singing this song i'm famous for that with those notes were like air on something and i was like what the hell is going on <laughs> i'm laughing because i take the flonase and the claret in too <laughs> well lesson learned and thank god they forgave me or thank god that it wasn't a room full of entertainers you get you know you get forgiven a little easier you know you're you're very funny in a very deadpan way it's it's cool you have this understated comedic side that does it isn't like eh you know like jerry lewis in some of the it's quick witted which i i love you know quick wit uh it's, and, uh, it's, and it's, it's cool it's I like laugh it. to keep from crying thing yes <laughs> yes here's another cool shot my friend look at this one is this at uh feinstein 54 below or yeah yep uh the, the, i play there often yeah and, great place uh, great one place. of my favorite places to play and you know, and I'll be back when when things are safe again. We'll all be back there. And uh, that photo is from Steven Sorokarf of Chloris, fantastic photographer. He's yeah. a good one. Yeah, yeah. Here's another. That is at Catalina Bar and Grill in Hollywood, um, which uh, which is really a, a, a fun place to play. Um, in in fact, because it's sort of their their main profile is jazz clint eastwood sometimes is caught he's a big jazz fan and he's if, if you go back and you watch clint eastwood's first movie he ever directed yeah uh, play misty for me there's a scene in it where he's at the carmel jazz festival or something he put that in the movie because he loves the go to the jazz festival anyway 
that's a jazz club. And uh, that night, there were these two people sitting a few tables in front of me who were there who were just like, just loving the show so much and so gracious and everything. And after the show, they came back backstage to say hello to me and uh, Duke Ellington's children. Mm. You never know who's going to be out there. It's another pinch me moment. Absolutely. Um, somebody's asking uh, about the suit, I think. That suit is a three piece Hugo, Hugo boss. Hugo boss. And, I, uh, I, I, which doesn't fit me right now because of my COVID-15. <laughs> well, I was going to say, you know, the, you know, the rule it's six feet apart from each other, but you got to be 10 feet from the refrigerator. <laughs> uh, I wish that that were the case. It's, it's kind of late to mention that now for everybody, but <laughs> well, I'm you, what do you want to get back into that suit? What do you, what have you been uh, snacking on? Are you been d doing comfort food? I mean, a lot of people have been bringing, they've been eating the food of their childhood. Suddenly they're eating yeah. the pop tarts again and all the, you know, the childhood stuff. And then of course, comfort food too. How about well, you? For me, it's been about, you know, I'm well past 40 now, but for me, it's been the other side of the, of that. It, you know, it's just taking a while. Uh, so I haven't been, I've been good for two months now, but it, it's just takes some time now. I'm learning. It takes more time. And I also have been sitting at the art table for hours and hours and hours. Yeah. You gotta have the dog or else, I, cause that gets me up and around. But there's some days where I'm sitting for a very long time. And, and as we all know now, you know, uh, sedentary, uh, lifestyle is, um, uh, is not good for weight loss. So you know yeah no no absolutely absolutely and then a lot of the gyms are closed down so it's tough even there um this photo from david uh, and draco this one i think is this cafe carlisle that's the cafe carlisle and that was my leather concert when was this one that was 2016 and you know for those of you who followed you know the history of rock and roll elvis presley had his black leather concert Yes, and uh, this was my, this was my leather concert. Yeah, that, yeah. that was fun. It was a, like almost like a glam rock thing going on there. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. That's a great shot. This one too, which we started with earlier. Yeah, that's a that's a that's a photo by a great photographer in New York. Her name is Dorothy Shi. Yeah, um, who's uh, actually. Uh, Taiwanese and Buddhist, so that was kind of fun that we were able to talk a little, a little uh, Mandarin and and stuff. Uh, and um, in the wide shot of that, I'm actually doing a Buddhist mudra. Mm. This, this one, um, so that was a little vibe we were going for there. Mm. Yeah, that's cool. It's really it's a great look too. Um, show us that again. The move you were just showing. Uh, I think it's this one. Uh, I'm doing. I'm doing it wrong, but she knew it better than me. I mean, I know some mudras, but the, you know, something like that. It's sort of a, like a universal energy kind of a thing. Really nice, really nice. There's also this too. That's kind of cool. That was um, sort of the centerpiece of that first art debut. Yeah. I got in trouble. I got, so, I got in some trouble for that one. For this? Yeah. Why? Well, uh, Some people take themselves very seriously and some Broadway people thought it was disrespectful and I don't think it was disrespectful. I, I saw myself as like, you know, like those Italian festivals with the float with the, like the little figure. Yeah. There's the thing was all around them. And so I saw this, like the, the Tony awards, like the Tonys, I thought it was fun with like pizza popping out and all oh, yeah, yeah. eyes on sure. you. And stuff. So it was sort of a psychodrama, but I guess, I don't know. I mean, people were, at that point, it was so new. It was like, what the hell is he doing? You know, what, what is he doing with this dabbling in art? You know, and, and one, one thing that I, I always remembered was- There's also people, a lot of judgmental people in the world too. No, it's just that like, what the hell is he doing? He's, it's people, people get uncomfortable when you go out of the narrative that they have set forth for you. Right. And, and, you know, Andy Warhol had a problem in Hollywood 
you know, he's, he made movies and stuff, and he had a problem in Hollywood, uh, and I think it's a quotation of his. He says that because they think we're making fun of them. Mm. You know? mm. um, but the difference is with that, I was making fun of them. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so now you know it, folks. <laughs> that is really cool. <laughs> That is really uh, <laughs> anyway, but you know what? I can't believe. You, uh, okay, yeah. yeah. I want to do this again with you, but yeah. I, I have Me to too. Me down too. now, and we, Me we too. should go because I, because one thing that I can't neglect. You have another life, project, and I have a little dog, and it needs to be walked. <laughs> and Poppy needs to be walked. Yeah. Tell us. There's a couple of before beforehand. We got to get these in for right. sure. You have some project, and you're welcome back anytime, my friend. And I hope whether you're back on the East Coast or I'm on the West, we get together, you know, when we can and break bread. That'd be really cool, John. And it was really a pleasure to have you here. And you're welcome back anytime. You have some really cool things that are coming up very soon, concert events and things like that. Tell everybody about it. Uh, okay. I think it's cool stuff. Yeah, let's give them the 411. If they made it this far. This far, oh, they're here. The they're all here. I did this was to promote something, right? So I, I hope for those of you who made it this far, I think you'd be very likely to be willing to maybe tune in for my next live stream. That's going to be audience. Honest. They stick with us for for to the end. They're amazing. That's Love great. These. Love it. Ease. So the space LV dot com. I have a live stream. Uh, I would say it's a comfort food of music kind of concert to to usher in the holidays. It's a Friday, December 4th. There will be holiday songs. There'll be some of my classics that I'm known for singing. Uh, many from my album, My Turn of R&B. And, you know, there'll always be Jersey Boys, so don't worry. If that's all you know of me, that you will get plenty. Um, and then, um, and then, uh, so that's December 4th, thespacelv.com. Very we nice. have an after party afterward because I can't do meet and greets now because of COVID, but this is a chance for us to have a Q and a and all that sort of stuff, uh, which we didn't get to do here so much, but we will another time. And, um, and then stay tuned because I'm also going to do a new year's Eve concert from LA from a place that I play in LA before COVID all the time. And that's not yet announced, but it will be, and it'll be on my website, johnloadyoung.com slash live where the things I do live are, um, but this one that is impending that's right around the corner is December 4th, Friday, December 4th, 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern. And, uh, and then it's available for a week after that on demand if you can't actually watch it in real time. Awesome. That is awesome. Cheryl says, great interview. You have so many interesting stories. Uh, really nice comments coming in here from everybody sharing, you know, the levity and really enjoying it. Looking forward to your Christmas show. Evelyn says that as well. Uh, Karis in uh, Scotland, 2 a.m., and I'm still here watching oh. Kathy in New oh, York so City. Then Karis in Scotland, let's, oh, maybe you'll tune in to my December 4th show if you're a late a night owl. You know, we'll be yeah. burning the midnight oil together. Yeah, Linda says, uh, can't wait for your holiday show. Saw it last year. It was great. Liz says she's here on watching to the right. end. I'll thank be you. Yeah, really, really great. You all know that what this means, and this is the thank you. And so uh, I appreciate your tuning in and uh and it's you know we'll we'll have another conversation someday you know maybe you'll help me write that that book for young aspiring actors it, the libra you know, the libra is here to help <laughs> not all easy yeah thanks uh, for your time to chat great interview thank you very much claudia and john good to see you chatting here in london too watching in london Right. I'll, I'll be here, there, everywhere, which is beautiful. Can't wait for the New Year's Eve as well. Already bought a ticket. Fantastic. Cool stuff. This was awesome, my friend. And I hope yeah. that uh, you met your expectations and you enjoyed the time with me as much as I really, oh, truly did with you. Much. I appreciate it. And um, and thanks for your kindness. And I'm glad you're doing this. And, uh, and also, uh, you know, I want to do this again sometime just so that I can get better at this because you could... I, all of these comments, this, I haven't done this before. I can see people talking about what we're saying as we're saying it. Yeah. And by the next time I see you, I'll probably have had my hair cut too. So I don't have to <laughs> hide my hair, you know, cause I'm getting my hair cut ahead of the concert. I have COVID hair right now under here. Yeah. I, you know, I haven't, mine is, 
actually is pressed down. It's usually as short as that guy, me there. But it's oh. if I let take these headphones off, yeah. boom, it's long. It has been cut since March. The salon called and said, do you still love us? <laughs> well, I want, you know, I want my fans who love me and think that I'm so youthful and young to still, because I stay inside all day. I don't go out in the sun. So I still don't have like my crow's feet and everything. But if I take this hat off, it's probably look like, you know, Bride of Frankenstein with the white <laughs> So I'd rather have the white on the hat than, you know, in my so camp. For of you, so those who've asked about the hat and wanted him to take it off, he just, a couple of them said, hey, take it off. Now you know why. No, it's COVID time and I'm allowed some of my dignity, people. <laughs> <laughs> Next time. All right. I got to go get my cut and color with Martin and some of you know him. Well, all right. And one phrase I'm sure you won't say about this evening uh, and this wonderful event we've had together here that Betty Davis once said was, what a dump. <laughs> yeah, no, not we won't say that. Not at but, all. Uh, but so, and f so those of you who follow me on Twitter and you wonder why you keep seeing these Betty Davis quotes, it's because I've been listening to a Betty Davis autobiography all week. So just yeah. finish that. So next week, I don't know, I'll be Genghis Khan or something. You know, <laughs> you'll understand why. <laughs> That's it. Well, all this great commentary, like you and something that I really, uh, a lot of things that, you know, hit me, uh, you sound so much like me in so many different ways is the appreciation of the audience. And that's why I have all of the audience here. And I've, all of these shows that I do, I engage the audience and sh try to show their comments. And because I think it's really important to bring them in, they feel like they're invested and they're a part of it, like they've enjoyed with all of us here. I mean, Christine, look at this. Thanks, Jim and John for an inspirational conversation. Fantastic stories, such great photos shared tonight. I enjoyed your artwork as well. So talented, kind, witty, a true lovety. A new lovety. A new lovety. Such a new lovety. There's, 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 a, there's some sort of lyric there. But yeah, this is, I like, Jim, that you started this off with that idea of, you know, lovety because I, I'm a kind of emotional kind of brooder and sometimes I can get a little, you know, dark in spite of myself but this but this i'm glad that we kept it ebullient here absolutely i got to show this last one before you scoot off okay winning that mm. yeah that's see that face i mean that's the face of a cancer winning a tony yeah right you know a, a <laughs> what were you thinking a leo would, would be looking straight into the camera like yeah see look at how, look at all you losers look how great i am um what were you, what were you thinking when you won that Lots of lots of mixed stuff. I mean, uh, one thing I'll say that we can get into it later is, that of course, uh, uh, kind of like the finish line of a marathon. That was the biggest goal, uh, you know, and hoped for that, uh, you know, and then it happened in a great role. You know, I, I knew with a role so great that it could go in that direction and I hoped it would. And then it did. So that was great. Um, uh, but also, you know, uh, all of those years of struggle that kid who fell asleep on an air mattress and all alone in Washington Heights with boxer shorts on his head. And there he is at Radio City Music Hall with a Tony. So, you know, some dreams do come true and uh, usually very difficult things to achieve end up having been worth it. And I'd like to say that too, in general, to all of us right now, this really frustrating and never ending pandemic uh, if we make it through and we stay healthy and all that stuff, I think on the other side, we'll have a chance to kind of do stuff better. And, um, and maybe it will have been worth it. I don't know if that's the best thing to say, but uh, we'll be stronger for it and uh, more grateful for the things that were everyday ordinary that we can't do now. I so. keep telling everybody, I hope we rise from all of this uh, kinder and more empathetic and less divisive and more collaborative. And uh, we might not be going back to normal as far as everything exactly the way it was before. There's actually a, probably a few things that will be better. Maybe we'll be more closer, more appreciative and caring for each other. And I'm really hoping that that is, those are some things, especially empathy, because before all of this, so many people were saying, where are the kind people? Where are the nice people? Nobody says, thank you or please. And we were actually like, you're talking about social media and everything. 
we were starting to social distance before we were told we had to because everybody stuck on social media, stuck with their heads in the cell phones. You could be talking to somebody, pouring your heart out, and they're stuck scrolling their cell phone. Oh, oh yeah, oh, that sounds good, and they're not even listening. So we were kind of social distancing before we were told we had to do it for our health and well-being. And I'm hoping maybe that out of all of this, we are kinder, more loving, and more empathetic towards each other. We need to be. Uh, I think it'll be the backlash against, uh, 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 sometimes Sometimes there's such a thing as a positive backlash. And so I think that we're gonna experience that going forward. Um, uh, but we gotta stay the course because we're not out of the woods yet. Anyway, because we're not care. out of the woods, yeah. Yeah. come to the virtual concert. I'm gonna try to make it as, immediate as I can so that it feels like we're together even though we're together apart you know well Absolutely. we'll get there again it's got to stay the course that's stay it the and keep a good attitude that coming from me who's like you know catastrophizer but <laughs> but when I'm out in public like this I generally try to maintain the good attitude <laughs> it's good for me too you know it's not just uh you know it's you know, it's not just my act of kindness for others. You know, it's 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 good to be positive. Thank you for reminding me to be a to for, to, to lead with levity. The Libra is here to help. <laughs> no copay. Well, so well, so have a great Saturday, and uh, and for those of you who are already we toast to Sunday, you. you know, have a nice brunch. And next time I'm having my cocktail, we're gonna go on Graham Norton here. Yeah. And then then the real stories will come out. And somebody else that enjoyed this evening was George Burns, of course. God. He loved it. <laughs> a certain generation. Well, and Jeannie did too. <laughs> see? All right. Well, uh, ha you have a good care. evening drinking your pink lemonade and rubbing your lamp, and maybe you'll get some wishes to come true. You know, <laughs> that didn't sound right. Wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> let's see now. <laughs> Mom, are you still watching? <laughs> Okay. All right. The, All the, right. I think we've had enough. But uh, but uh, thank you, everybody. And uh, and Jim, nice to meet you. I look you forward too. to seeing you in person when it's safe to do so. Yeah, absolutely. We'll stay in touch, my friend. You have a great holiday and good luck with all the events coming up. Keep me posted and we'll chat again soon. Thanks for all this time, John. It was all really right. fantastic. Yeah. Nice to talk to you. Have Bye. a good night. Bye-bye now. John Lloyd Young and Jasper below. Hope you guys enjoyed it. And uh, if this is your first time watching, again, I'm your host, Jim Masters. We're live every night, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. If you're watching there on YouTube, subscribe to the channel so you can comment more. Don't uh, forget to click that notification bell so that way there you don't miss all the content. We have over 200 episodes of the Gym Master Show live that are there for you to enjoy right there on the YouTube channel. Um, you can also find me on Facebook at Gym Masters TV, Instagram. We're talking about social media. So Instagram at Gym Masters TV, Twitter at Gym Masters TV. And uh, this is the kind of thing we do. Uh, and sometimes, you know, when there's music, we talked about doing some music. And when, we, when he comes back, maybe we'll do that as well. And, you know, film clips and stuff. But we want to have a really good, inspiring conversation, especially now with all that's going on. And um, so if you're joining us for the first time, this is an entertainment lifestyle talk show series that we created uh, 30 weeks ago. And uh, it's so much fun. And we have uh, guests from television, Broadway, Hollywood, science, nature, health, wellness, inspiration. Uh, we've got chefs coming on, comedians. We're going to be doing some Christmas shows coming on as well with uh, terrific singers and performers. We've got some so many incredible things coming. And believe it or not, we're booking guests all the way now into mid-January. Every single night, we have amazing people. Tomorrow night is Melissa Manchester. <laughs> she's wonderful, and she's all excited to be here. We're looking forward to her tomorrow night. Uh, that is Sunday, live on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. Coming up November 30th, you remember Nellie Olson from Little House on the Prairie, Allison Grim, she's going to be with us as well, and so many others. If you missed anything, go back in the archives on the YouTube channel and check out the uh, bevy of incredible episodes of our fun, entertaining lifestyle talk show series. Uh, we have a lot of fun here, a lot of levity. Our viewers are amazing, and we're welcoming all of you if you've just joined us for the first time. We thank uh, my very special guest. Here's another cool shot, too, of John. 
Really love these shots. And if you missed any of the shots, you know, as we were going along, we'll zip through here uh, as well. And we mentioned all the uh, credits of the fantastic uh, photographers who took these cool shots of John over the years and the gang. Of course, you know him from Jersey Boys and so much more. He's got those great concerts coming up as well. Check him out, of course, on, on social media and his website as well. And again, his artwork, that might have been something that uh, you might not have been aware of, that he's a great artist. And this is really unique, what he's doing. Um, quite special. I think this was awesome. I think it was a cool, witty idea with the Tony's Pizza. Some more cool shots here as well. Again, this is some of his amazing artwork. We talked about this earlier. Um, and that's great too. I mean, for me, before I got into the fabulous world of television and radio and everything that I've done all these years, which I studied in school and everything, um, I studied architecture and design and art as well. So I really appreciate, you know, his artistic side in terms of this kind of art is really, really fantastic. And of course this, yeah, this was when he was getting the Tony award and I mean, Tony Grammy, multi-platinum, uh, performer there, recording artists. And look, starting from the beginning. Isn't that cool? They already, the family knew, get a microphone in his hand. That's what happened with me too. When I was a kid, you know, I was always running around with that cassette recorder, sort of interviewing people. My sister and I did plays in the garage with our neighborhood friends. We did plays in our bedroom where we used the bed as the stage. We put a rope across the wall and we put a curtain over it. And then our mother would say, are those my good curtains? <laughs> and then we would reveal the curtain, open it. And then my sister and I were doing all the plays. And that's what it is. And uh, growing up in New York as well. And, um, you know, it's amazing when you can touch people's lives as John has and continues to in sort of his humble way. And um, we're so glad to have had this time with him on the show. Uh, I also want to let you know, uh, Darren Holden, who was with Riverdance, who's a dear friend of mine. I've interviewed him on public television many times. He's also coming on the show uh, in December and lots of cool artists and, and performers and, and non-performers. This show, we do everything. It's a little bit of everything, um, not just one genre or just one particular style. And uh, if you missed this episode... Uh, we're going to take a look at some of these great comments, too. If you missed the episode um, or missed something on the episode or you want to see it again or you want to share it, it's right there for you on YouTube. It's all recorded and archived. You can share the link. Let's take a look at some of our uh, – what I love some of the things that John said I was so in touch with. I, I, you know, in a way, it reminds me of like a New York cousin um, about – really appreciating the audience, the people who are the consumers of you, of your talent, of your, you know, as you're doing what you do that you love so much, like I do, the work I do in television, radio, and everything else, and stage. And then this show we launched, this show is really an extension of what I do professionally, you know, in broadcast and media and everything. And uh, I love doing the show. As long as you guys are there, I'll keep doing the show live. We are here in the greater New York area. He was on West Coast. We're here on the East, his old stomping grounds. Uh, in the greater New York area, Southern New England coast between New York and Boston is where we are. But if you get to, you know, chat with people, inspire them with a lot of levity, we believe in levity here. And that's what happened. I was saying our show is about light love and levity. And I flubbed once back in, I think, July. And I said, levity. And then everybody was like, all the guests, I think Ann Hampton Calloway was our next guest. And she's like, I love that word. Keep that word. And everybody's like, I love levity. So we put a lot of levity into this show. And, um, and we invite you to join us uh, every night. And we also love our viewers. Uh, thank you, Jim. Love the show tonight. Enjoy the rest of your evening. Thank you, Kathy Short and Mary and uh, Kathy, of course. Cleveland and Mary in Florida. Thanks, Jim. Great night. Good night, Jim. All the lovities. Thank you very much, Kathy. Diana says, shows are perfect meds for these times. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Diana. I hope you'll continue to watch. Subscribe to that YouTube channel, Jim Masters TV. Spread the word. Tell everybody about this cool show. We love this. Um, it's really amazing and a lot of fun. And uh, Rini Katz, my dear friend, is a wonderful cabaret star watching in the Midlands of Flushing, Queens, New York. You're welcome, Rini. Good to see you. Tina, wishing all the lovities a happy and healthy Thanksgiving. Stay safe. You too, Tina. 
Wonderful having you with us, Tracy Alexander. Thank you, Jim. Really enjoyed this. Can't wait for tomorrow. Yeah, Melissa Manchester. Looking forward to that. Thanks, Jim. Have a great night. Kathleen in New York City, my dear friend. Kathleen and I were on the Rachel Ray show together. It's about two years ago, right, Kathleen? We'll have to do that again. That was a lot of fun. Claudia says, first timer here. We'll be back. Love it, Claudia G. I love that. I love your profile photo there as well. That's really cool. Uh, Jill Jason, Jason Communications, Master Your Power. Gym Masters Your Power. The other thing we do on my Facebook page at Gym Masters TV and also on uh, YouTube, I've been doing for years on Facebook Masters Mantras, which are sort of these uh, inspirational observations of life and things that I think about and try to lift people up and be positive. And then we also do some of those in video form on the YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. And so many people told me to write a book. Uh, and just like with John talking about it, would love to do that um, as well. You're very welcome, Jill. Wow, I love that, Liz. And you are watching uh, in Allentown, Pennsylvania, Jennifer, uh, in bed under the warm com comforter tonight now. Fun night. Thanks, Jim and John. So that means when we play our closing theme music, when the gym masters, singers, and orchestra play the theme music, you're going to be doing your couch wiggles right there in Allentown, Pennsylvania. <laughs> Usually you dance in your kitchen or your living room when you hear the theme song to our show. So now you said when you're in bed, you're going to be doing uh, bed wiggles, right? <laughs> Thank you, Liz. Good having you with us. And uh, Maureen as well. Loved having you here. All of you watching in Europe, we have a we have a big audience overseas as well in Europe and Asia, Australia. And thank you so much. I know it's late in the hour where you guys are. So we really thank you for sticking with us. Some of you in Scotland and other places as well. Uh, Louise, thank you, Jim. Loved it. And my first time as a Lovity. Well, you are welcome. We welcome, of course, all of our regular viewers and Lovities. We welcome all of the uh, fans as well. And the new Lovities who've joined us here, who've been watching uh, our great friend John join us. So I'm glad you enjoyed our conversation and the levity, talking a little bit more about his life, his passions, some of the incredible projects he's been a part of and things to come as well. And he will be back. We'll have him back. And that's something cool, which I love. A lot of the guests, if not every guest we've ever had on, has said, I want to come back. I even have a couple of guests who are in Hollywood who love the show so much. You know, the warmth, the way we I do the show. They're like, if you ever have a guest not be available last minute, call me. I want to come back on. <laughs> like, really? And they're like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Starfighter LLC. This is two of the best ever in a row. It's so much better watching while it's on than the replays. Yes, you can watch everything archived. But as somebody who loves live television, live radio, live stage, live everything, because, you know, I'm hosting so many different shows like I do and everything and TV and radio and stage. I love live, just like I'm sure John does as well, you know, performing. There's something about live and with viewers and listeners and an audience and you can interact. And as you see, I'm very uh, viewer centric. I love to bring you in because you're investing your time with us. So I like to bring you in because you it makes you feel extra connected to the show, maybe to me, to the guest, to all of us. Uh, when we started the show 30 weeks ago, uh, we didn't have guests. It was me hosting the show and having a lot of fun with the viewers. And then friends of mine in television and Broadway and Hollywood and film and music said, I want to come on the show. And then friends of friends said, oh, this person would be great to be on the show. And now a lot of viewers are suggesting people. And uh, some of the folks coming on the show are watching the show first and saying, hey, I want to come on that. And I think that's really that is very cool. And that is uh, beautiful. First time. Thank you, Margaret Lowe. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Excellent, Claudia. That is really, really beautiful. Liz says, uh, yes, thank you. And happy Thanksgiving, Jim. Thank you very much, Liz. We really appreciate that. And could you believe Thanksgiving? It's going to be a different Thanksgiving for everybody, but um, count the blessings, count the joys, uh, good health and love from family and friends and wonderful nights like this. And every night, um, count the blessings, this particular, you know, remember the things we do at every Thanksgiving and over the holidays, but really remember the things that you're thankful for 
this Thanksgiving, right? It's extra important. Happy Thanksgiving to you and your family too, Liz. Love having you here. And Diana, claps and uh, thank you so much. You're very welcome, Marie. It's wonderful having you here. Tina says, good night, guys. Denise says, thank you, Jim. Judith Lee, Jim, it was great. Thank you very much, Judith. You are very welcome. Llewellyn, nice to see you, Llewellyn, there in the Palm Springs, California area, catching us on YouTube. Jim, that was so good. Thank you, Claudia G. I love it. This is what I do. Uh, you know, uh, I love it too. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Make sure Jasper's awake. <laughs> I love all this. This is, uh... oh, Romina R. I wonder if that's Romina who provided some of those beautiful photos. Um, love, thank you very much. Super afternoon, gents. I love that cool stuff. Stay safe and well, loveities. That's right. Everybody here on the show is a lovety. Um, great start to the Sunday. Have a great night uh, and see you two weeks from Malaysia. I enjoyed it. Yeah, baby. Great interview. Fellow cancer, really genuine. Thank you, both of us. Thank you very much. We appreciate that. And all of you guys, fantastic. Good stuff. Good stuff. I like the way she reverses it too. OX, OX. That's creative. Really cool. Thank you very much, all of you. And uh, really, really awesome. And a couple things that we do as well. Thank you very much. Love the show. Learning so much. We'll see you tomorrow. Melissa Manchester. Bed wiggles for you. And uh, really appreciate this tonight. Happy Thanksgiving. You as well. Thank you. Awesome show. Valerie, 1948 Glassford. What a cool handle that is, huh? Thank you, Valerie. Uh, give some love to the uh, YouTube page we or YouTube channel. Love it uh, at Gym Masters TV and tell everybody about it and check out maybe some of our other past shows. Some really cool people and great conversations. Love to hear where it came from. Thank you, Jim. Proud to be a lovety now. You are all loveties. John's a lovety. You know, it's what happens is before we start the show, you know, we I chat with the guest beforehand, and um, and even sometimes, you know, there we do sometimes we do shows where there isn't a guest. We did a two-hour host chat foodie festival show, where for two, and that's on the YouTube archives as well at Gem Masters TV, where I took a Saturday, and I did two shows in the one day, or was it a Sunday? It was two shows in one day, so we had a guest at night, and then the afternoon we did two hours talking with the viewers, the loveties about all kinds of food. They sent all their recipes in. We were talking about recipes. Some sent cookbooks. I prepared a whole meal and I was dining and everybody was eating. And we, it was like lunch dinner with Jim. And it was a foodie festival show. We've gone on location. We went to Malibu, Los Angeles, Red Rocks, Colorado, Netherlands. We do a lot of cool stuff here on the show. Greetings from beautiful San Diego, Liz. Love from Los Angeles. Good to see you there in Los Angeles. Another great show. Thank you, Jim. Good night, love it. He's Juanita in South Africa. Love it, love it, love it. Thank you very much. We appreciate all this uh, love it coming our way. We put out the love it and you guys certainly send it back. Christine, thanks for a great show with John. Loved it. See you all tomorrow. Good night, Jim and love it, friends. You too, Christine in North Carolina. Yes, lots of positive connectivity for the love it Absolutely. Absolutely. A couple of things. Again, an amazing array of guests. We post on YouTube upcoming guests and, and themes to our shows too, because again, we do a lot of uh, host chat. We do a lot of special uh, feature shows and different themes and topics, but also on Facebook at Gym Masters TV. If you want to give that a like, feel free. We post upcoming guests as well, and we've got some amazing people coming up. Um, so I wanted to thank you again and all of the we also have a cast of characters and I was showing John, George Burns is always here. <laughs> and George says, good night. Jeannie is here. Jeannie says, good night. We did a nostalgic night one night and I brought these out and everybody fell in love with them and said, keep these characters on the show. So Jeannie is here in the bottle. It's really cool, huh? This thing weighs a ton. And also, um, boy, my hair's getting long. This hair has, it's usually short like that guy there. <laughs> it's getting really long. I haven't had it cut since uh, since everything started in March. It's kind of cool. Jimmy is there, and Jimmy says, uh, thanks for joining us. 
That was actually a childhood toy. Would you like his blue uh, shoes there? Don't step on my blue suede shoes. He's actually made of porcelain, which is amazing. So Jimmy's going to hang out over there. Silver's over here. Silver says goodnight. Silver we picked up on a television shoot when we were in Europe over in Switzerland. Silver, the Silver Lab. Very apropos, right? And Gilligan. We had Dream of Denver on the show. Dream of Denver. Fabulous person. Dear friend as well. Actress. And she also owns a radio station in West Virginia where she lives. Her beloved was Bob Denver. Bob Denver played Gilligan on Gilligan's Island. So she saw our set here, right? She saw the set and all the different things we have on the set. We also have a huge panda over there named Lin Lin. And I'll bring Lin Lin on again one of these days. Lin Lin is huge. And I got it for a birthday gift. It was sent to me. I mean, it's this big uh, and it's a huge panda. Um, Gilligan, this is with love from Dreama Denver. Aloha, Jim. Dreama. Uh, of course, the wife of Bob Denver, the wonderful actor who played Gilligan on Gilligan's Island. So she goes, Jim, you have to have a Gilligan doll on set. So she beautifully and graciously sent me the Gilligan doll with love from Dream of Denver. She was also, uh, he was also in Dobie Gillis. Really, really cool stuff, I tell you. And uh, I just got two cookbooks, one from Christine Clifton and Wozniak. Tesla Bella, the wonderful actress and voice artist and now dear friend, sent me chocolate chip cookies, which didn't last more than two days. And then when I told her they're gone, sent from Florida, all these Christmas cookies last weekend, they're now gone. <laughs> it's amazing. Our, one of our viewers, Kathleen, is a dear friend, sent this New York Mets uh, wine glass, <laughs> which really, it really is Trader Joe's pink lemonade. <laughs> Sometimes we have some other things in it, but tonight it's for it's, uh just having something refreshing. Um, hello from Central Valley of California, fellow cancer. Yay, George Burns. Good to see you, Dinah. And love the props. Aren't they cool? I'll have to bring uh, the panda back. The panda is huge. And sometimes, and the name of Lin Lin, uh, has an actual certification and the whole bit. Um, thank you. Oh, so you like the hair long. Kind of cool, huh? It's kind of cool. If I take the headphones off, then it's like, uh, then it comes out a little bit more and, you know, it's kind of cool. Um, I had to make it a little bit more, it usually comes out a little bit more, a little longer. I had to make it a little bit more quaffed today because I had a television shoot earlier in the day and it needed to be just a little bit more brought in, but it's quite long and <laughs> I think it's kind of cool. Wanted to grow it long for a while. So, hey, during everything we've all been going through in this last year, what the heck, right? Good night, all loveties. What an amazing show with John and Jim. All loveties, thank you and God bless. Always great when you're with us, uh, Danilo, there in San Diego, Dante CD. We love it here in Lovety Hall. My first time here, and I'm a lovety for life. Awesome, Maureen. We love that. We love that. Spread the word. Tell all your friends we're here. 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific, uh, generally every day. Sometimes we do bonus shows. We do pop-up shows. We do extra shows. And yeah, you got to love George and Jeannie. Absolutely. And uh, that was a gift too, that Jeannie bottle. It's it's heavy. It's real solid hand-painted uh, Jeannie bottle. And um, a friend of mine knew I love the series as well, you know, being a TV guy and uh, sent it. I like your hair longer. Very cool. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. And yes, yeah, a lot of people do. And uh, I love that as well. You guys are great. I can't wait for Allison to come on. Yes, Allison, who played uh, Nellie Olson, Little House in the Prairie. Do you know, we also had Kathy Garver on. She was Sissy on um, Family Affair. Remember Buffy, Jody, Sissy, uh, Brian Keith? You can see that uh, conversation as well. Glenn Scarpelli was on about a week ago, uh, dear friend. Glenn Scarpelli played Alex in One Day at a Time on CBS. And now they have their revival. Uh, they have a new version of it. Uh, and it's, it's hilarious. It's hilarious. Rita Moreno's in it. She plays the, the grandmother and it's hilarious. But he was in the original with Bonnie Franklin and Valerie Bertinelli and Pat Harrington and Mackenzie Phillips, who we dear friends with, of course. And we had an amazing conversation, Glenn and I. And I'm hoping to um, 
he he wants me to come out to Sedona and we might even do like a mini version of this show together, which is cool. He's out in Sedona, beautiful area and uh, very happy. And um, we had a great conversation with Glenn Scarpelli, great actor, singer. And of course he was a terrific child actor. And he uh, also owns a television station in Sedona, Arizona too. And we talked about that really, really cool stuff. So uh, you can see all those episodes uh, back further uh, right there on YouTube at Jim Masters TV. Also, something else we do, we always tell everybody before we wrap up to relax, to breathe, to, you know, love one another and love yourself. Uh, if you're a caretaker type and you're always taking care of everybody else, take time for yourself too, to breathe, breathe from the diaphragm. It's really good to get a full breath and relax. And believe me, I have to tell this, I have to remind, your host has to remind himself of this oftentimes too, because, you know, working in such a crazy, busy industry as I do. So you guys relax. People ask, where'd you get this? We got this when we were on vacation in Newport, Rhode Island. And if you look, it's real cool. It's, you see like a 1920s, 1930s beach scene with the people in there having fun on the Looks like, you know, Newport, Rhode Island back then. So relax. I know not every day is going to be perfect. Not every day is going to be awesome. Not every day is going to be terrific. But you're here. You're alive. You have family, loved ones. You know, we're six feet above ground. That's a plus. So work your day from there. And uh, no matter what the day brings, and there's crazy stuff that goes on, you know, life can bring some real challenges. Um, just try to smile and think of what I tell everybody, especially during these times, is to think about the constants in life, uh, the things that are constant. Like for me, I love going to the ocean. Um, I live here. We, we live here along the coast. I was raised, you know, in the northeastern United States along the coast, and we're just a couple blocks away from the coast. So for me, the ocean speaks to me. I'm always swimming it, surfing it, kiteboarding it, boogie boarding it, sailing it, walking it. Uh, I have such a mutual respect for the ocean and have always been in it or near it. So for me, the ocean is a real go-to place for me. So find your Zen place. Also with loving family and friends is a Zen place for me around family and friends, time with family and friends. Um, I also love my career, intelligent radio, uh, writing, music, uh, tennis, cycling, um, things creative, but also the ocean. Uh, you put me anywhere and I, I love it, but the ocean. And of course, you know, the work that I do in the industry, I love as well. And do what you love, love what you do. And I've been blessed to be able to do that in so many ways, shapes and forms um, on television, on radio and stage in other areas and just really absolutely love the stuff. So don't forget to smile, everybody. Put a smile on your face if you can. It's contagious, just like laughter. It is truly contagious. And don't forget to share the lovity as much as you can. Don't forget to share the lovity. That's really, truly what life's all about. And, um, and you take care of one another. It's really important to do that, you know? So... Kathleen, yes, that's that's a lot of cool emojis. You got the you got the peace, the thumbs up. You got the heart. You got the smooch. You got the care, and you got the prayer. Love it. Love that. Juanita, late night for you. You are a real trooper. Thanks for being with us, my friend. We'll see you tomorrow as well. There, in beautiful South Africa, another place we have to come to visit. And Maureen, Sedona is one of the prettiest places in Arizona. It certainly is. It's absolutely incredible. Again, folks, if you want to, uh, Melissa Manchester again tomorrow night, don't forget to join us live at 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. It's going to be absolutely awesome. And we have great shows coming up. Good stuff. Wild wood days when you were younger. I love that, Tina. If this is your first time watching the Gym Master Show live, it's really cool and a blessing to have you with us. And we love all of you. Uh, regular loveties, new loveties, spread the word. Keep telling everybody. And uh, we hope you'll join us again. I am your host, Jim Masters, thanking you for your time this time. Till next time, you'll also learn that this crowd, they love food, children, pets, all kinds of things. But especially if we start talking about food, you'll watch 
all the comments start coming in again. So I better wrap before we talk about food because we did a two hour show just talking about food, a foodie festival show. And it was, you know, initially when I started this series, the Gym Master Show Live Entertainment Lifestyle Talk Show series, bringing back the lost art of conversation, entertainment, more. Uh, these shows were only supposed to be an hour. I was only going to do an hour. You know, because that's that's good, an hour, right? Most talk shows are like an hour. That's, that's a lot of investment, a lot of pre-production, you know, take, uh, balancing this with my professional work. And there's a lot of preparation for these shows. Even though, you know, I come on and we're live and we have a good time and there's nothing scripted and there's no teleprompter and no pre-produced questions or any of that. We just have a good conversation. There's a lot of work behind the scenes to put the shows together. So um, it's... Uh, yeah. <laughs> Food. I knew it. I knew it. And uh, thank you, Diane. I appreciate that. I appreciate that as well. Really uh, nice comments. These shows were only supposed to be an hour, but we have so much fun and we're not, none of us are good at uh, saying, you know, goodbye or, or good night. We always have these extended goodbyes. <laughs> so I will say, see you later. We're here again, 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. If we alter the time, you know, due to a guest's availability, like a guest in Europe where it's later, sometimes we do shows at three in the afternoon on a Saturday or Sunday. But we are generally here Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, live. If you ever miss a show, all of them are archived on our YouTube channel at Gym Masters TV. And uh, great to hear that, Tina. We will be here waiting for you as well. Tell your friends. And again, one more time, don't forget to check out the websites and everything for uh, our great guest, uh, John Lloyd Young. And again, uh, this picture is from Alex uh, Horner. And this one was from Andrew Stiles. Uh, those are the photographers. We want to make sure we credit them. This one as well from Alex Horner as well. Great shots. We thank John. Uh, straight shooter, right? Straight shooter. Uh, authentic, real. He really opened up about his life. You know, a lot of people tend to do that on our show. Um, and hopefully that's because they feel comfortable and they feel non-threatened and not judged. You know, we're here to, you know, break bread and have fun and chat and have a good time and bring our international audience in for the ride. So you guys are the best. You take care. You be well. Jim Masters here once again saying thanks for being with us. Thank you for your time this time till next time tomorrow. All right. Bed wiggles are ready. The Gym Master Singers and Orchestra, are you guys ready to hit it? All right. Our theme is coming up. Our theme music that we use in the beginning and the end of the show. That's right. Uh, Jennifer in Allentown, Pennsylvania is always dancing in the kitchen or doing backflips in her living room or she's, couch, she's doing couch wiggles on the couch or she's wiggling in the bed. Or I guess right now, we're going to envision her in her bed wiggling <laughs> in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Lovely hugs to you, Christine, as well. And give a lovely hug to your mom for us as well, your lovely mom. Mary Bishop, love to you as well. They're in Florida. We hope we get to Florida this Christmas. Thanksgiving, we're everybody's sticking home, our relatives, everybody's staying home. But uh, which I think most people are doing, it's a smart thing to do. But we're hoping we can get to see our family down in Florida for Christmas. Uh, we hope things get better everywhere. You know, blessings to us all. Tough time right now, but we're here to put smiles in your face, to inspire you, inform you, educate you, and have a good time doing it on our show here um, as often as we can. So, with that, a toast to you all, to our international viewers, our domestic viewers, to all viewers. And again, our very special guest, John Lloyd Young. A real pleasure. Thanks, gang. Love you all. Get ready, uh, Jennifer. You're going to be zen there in Allentown, Pennsylvania. Our theme music is coming up. And I hope you enjoy the rest of your evening. We thank you for being with us here on the show. You guys are truly Love it is truly the best. I'm just seeing all these comments that are still coming in here. <laughs> it's amazing. I will read them all. We tried to show as many as we can. Sometimes they move so fast we can't show every single one. But we tried to, you know, get in as many as we can and uh, have John see them and me see them and you guys see them as well. And uh, and that's a wrap. Just under three hours. Short night. <laughs> We had Scott Schwartz on. You should see that episode. Scott Schwartz was in uh, A Christmas Story, 
and the toy, the toy with uh, Jackie Gleason and Richard Pryor. Speaking of that, we had Richard Pryor Jr. on the show. We had Rain Pryor, their dear friends of mine, Rain Pryor, the daughter of comedian Richard Pryor. She was a guest on the show. Uh, you can go back and see those episodes as well. Uh, cheers to you, Kathy, and happy day to you as well, Diana. But uh, we're going to wrap. Yes, we are. <laughs> you guys have a good night. Get ready to wiggle in your bed there. Jen is Zen in Allentown. Here comes our theme music. Truly, you guys are a blessing. Love doing these shows for you. And as long as you're out there, we'll be here producing and hosting them for you and for your enjoyment. Thanks for watching on our YouTube channel at Jim Masters TV. Again, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Periscope, and Twitch, all at Jim Masters TV. All right, get your tickets for the uh, great uh, concerts coming up for uh, John Lord Young. It's going to be great. And uh, we will see you tomorrow with Melissa Manchester right here on the Jim Masters Show Live. Good night, everybody. Take care. Love you all. We'll see you again soon. Bye-bye. <laughs>